can't sing. Can't sing licensed songs. Or oh, there will be trouble in the water. <laughs> and about the Negro spirituals. Nintendo Tan shut me down. Swing low. Sweet Nintendo fans. Nintendo trying to shut me down. We back, we back, Joycey, we back. We're gonna have this therapy session, whether Nintendo or YouTube or whoever wants it or not. Swing low, Nintendo fans. We're here to treat your Nintendo wounds. It's all right, it's okay for you to not be happy. Ooh. <laughs> uh, swing low, <laughs> Nintendo fans. Um, I don't understand. I I just turned my PC on, so it wasn't like. It was on, and it was getting clogged up with virtual memory. Uh, that's why I hate PCs. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. As soon as I upgrade my Mac, I will be live streaming on my Mac, and I guarantee you I won't have one-tenth of the problems I have streaming on here. Show, show, show. I need Uncle Ruckus, <laughs> says Geek Life, says Jay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, I think we're good. We're live. We're good. Let's get it going, folks. Let's not mess around. Let's go. All right. Welcome back, Bruce Kent. What's up, Jay? Uh, Jay is actually uh, partially the inspiration for this, uh, the titling <laughs> of this being a therapy session because me and Jay, we have therapy sessions um, on his channel about a myriad of other things, uh, comic book related, movie related stuff. Go check out uh, Jay, uh, Geek Life in the uh, chat here. Just click on him and give him a subscribe because uh, like I said, we do uh, chats and whatnot. We do um, streams. Uh, therapy sessions <laughs> for things such as uh, uh, Fox X-Men and Disney Star Wars and it's a good old time so check us out uh, <laughs> alright what's up Jonathan Reed welcome back welcome back Skells81 are we celebrating Nintendo Switch mediocrity for 2020 we certainly are <laughs> we are certainly celebrating the mediocrity I need a shoulder to cry on. Just want some Bayonetta in my life. And no one understands Joycey. I understand Joycey. I completely understand you. Um, I just not too long ago watched uh, Sony State of Play, which wasn't bad. Um, but we're going to talk about how sad, especially comparative, uh, Nintendo is. Not just to themselves, but also the competition. The other companies, such as Microsoft... Uh, Xbox and Sony PlayStation uh, <laughs> sessions <laughs> right chance with the trees you know what I'm saying um, Lupa Chilo PCs are almost as complicated as women almost <laughs> uh, ah, some women aren't that complicated uh, some guys are very complicated so but I get your point uh, even got the stream labs or stream elements bot up in here running. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, sup with your channel, says Bruce Kent. I don't know, man. It ain't my channel. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's doing it again. It's doing it again. All right. Let's 
I think we're still fine right now, but Wii U for life, baby people, dog on it, but it's still awesome. Bayonetta 1 and 2, son, no doubt. I mean, that was great, right? When we got Bayonetta 1 and 2. Um, I don't know what that widget is about. Everything looks fine here. Um, looks like everybody's back in, so welcome. Make sure you hit the like button again. I know it's... Um, oh, actually, if you haven't hit it already. Is it still... I'm checking now to see if it's... Yeah, just re retouch on that like button. Um, if you're back in now, so that'd be great. All right. Okay. Uh, Terminator Juice. Sony has a new console and still supporting the PS4. They have more to show than Nintendo. See, Terminator Juice, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to get into that as well. That's exactly what I was talking about just a few seconds ago. Um, I meant Nintendium. Oh, yeah, Nintendium. I will talk about Nintendium right at the end of this. Because um, I finally got in my Nintendium shirts. So I was very ready to go. But I'll explain on that. Um, but it's coming. It's just got a little hiccup. Uh, Natasha Connor, uh, Review Tech USA stream did it off on for a few hours last night. Oh, he was having issues too. Yeah, I mean it's not you know we do what we can to get it to go right, but you don't know it could be anything. Um, people want to you know talk about your stream or your um, your internet. My internet is fine. It's very capable. Uh, it's just a myriad of things that can go wrong. Uh, we used so awesome, we got to run it back. Woot, says Visor Grunt, no doubt. All right, Harui up in here. I pretty much forgot the, the, huh, the IU? I'm confused. I'm, confu I'm confused on what you're saying there. We Gucci, says Na uh, Navon Wise. I believe so, Navon Wise. All right, let's go. Let's go, folks. Nintendo, if you're listening, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> or you're not doing? Uh, as you can see, the stream is called Core Nintendo Fan Therapy Session. And I'm mostly speaking to Core Nintendo fans. Um, there are some Core Nintendo fans who are Defendos. And they might not go with what's going on up in here tonight. But um, we keep it real up in here in Mr. T Channel. Always have always will uh so that will continue um and i just don't get it like i mean i, I kind of get it but you know we obviously what's setting this off what's setting this uh this therapy session right here off it was the tipping point uh was is the announcement of pikmin 3 deluxe i mean <sighs> It, what's funny is, I don't know how long ago this was, because um, I should have checked before I came on here. But my boy clocked it. Check out Clock This Channel. Awesome Nintendo YouTuber as well. There is It's a, it's a no-spin zone as well on his channel as it is here. Uh, please check him out. He just hit 500 subscribers. Um, so that's very awesome. I remember what that was like for me the first time. It was great. So uh, hit him up. Uh, if you need to know... His links, I'm, they're always in my description. If They might not be in my live stream description, but it's in every video description. So just go hit up Clock It. Hit up the whole crew, the Juices Loose crew, because we are the no-spin Nintendo fan zone <laughs> when it comes to Nintendo stuff. Uh, you will get no spin from us. Um, so, like I was saying, core Nintendo fans. Core Nintendo fans bought that device you see behind me on the couch there, on the chair. That is a Nintendo Wii U. Uh, I just want to say that because Nintendo may not remember that system. <laughs> uh, and it looks that way. If you look at, like I said, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, which is setting it off uh, the final straw for me. And, you know, I don't, final straw as far as me just kind of unleashing. Uh, because this is just out of hand. It's gotten way out of hand. And this is just not the year. If this was a week, if this was a year where we were getting crazy new release after crazy new release, uh, or not even just a couple of new big Nintendo fan games, um, Pikmin Three Deluxe wouldn't be as painful. But like I was saying about my boy Clocked It, he did a video. I feel like it was over a year ago, um, 
maybe it wasn't that long, maybe it was a few months ago, talking about, yeah, it was probably a few months, talking about um, Pikmin 3, or Pikmin 4, what he wants for Pikmin 4. Because, you know, there was that whole thing in 2015 when Miyamoto said Pikmin 4 was almost done, but then was that Hey You Pikachu, or was it Hey You Pikachu, Hey Pikmin on 3DS, or was he talking about a new Pikmin game? Uh, but after Hey Pikmin had come out, he reiterated that Pikmin 4 was going along. That's all he could say. So it, you know, it didn't seem like he was talking about Pikmin uh, or Hey Pikmin. He was talking about a new Pikmin game for the next console or whatever. This was, tw I believe it was 2017, where he reiterated that Pikmin 4 was going along nicely or was still going along development was. And um, I feel like, I thought at the time, you know, because I, 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 I made a comment on his channel saying, oh, uh, Pikmin 4 for, uh, for, what was it, for Switch 2? And it was like a little joke. So it couldn't have been that long ago. Um, but, I'm, you know, a few months, whatever, a year. And that, that was a joke to me because I was like, oh, yeah, obviously, there's going to be a Pikmin 4. I mean, come on, it's been seven years at this point. Um, surely we'll get a sequel to Pikmin. Um, and, and like I said, Miyamoto said he was working on it. So I don't think that was entirely wrong. I think Miyamoto was working on Pikmin something uh, with Alamor, Alam, Alamor, Alamor, <laughs> Alamar, and uh, what's his name, Luke? Is that right? Uh, from Pikmin 2. Um, and Nintendo said, no, let's just make that DLC, there's too much to do. Maybe there's too much to do to make a whole new game. Let's add that into Pikmin 3. And Miyamoto probably said, like, what? <laughs> um, but this new dude for Kawa was probably like, yeah, man, we got to maximize, you know. Pikmin 3 did pretty well, especially for Wii U. It sold over a million copies on Wii U. Um, but that's not enough. Even though Pikmin games traditionally haven't sold a, a ton they were always around a million even on gamecube i believe pikmin 1 and 2 on gamecube were just barely million sellers so it's not like it's a big franchise where you got to re-up if you only sell a million because that's typically what you get um but this is the switch era so we gonna squeeze we're gonna squeeze every ounce we can out of everything so i have a feeling like he was working on pikmin 4 with alamar and he, they were just like, let's just make that DLC. We don't have time to complete this whole game, make this a whole new game. We'll just re-release like we've been doing, you know, over and over again on on uh, Switch. We'll re-release Wii U games, uh, add things to them, and charge sixty dollars. Why not? People are defending it, and they'll go out and buy it. So let's do that. And. I don't like being here, folks. Like, this does not bring me any joy as a core Nintendo fan to be where I am in this therapy session live stream. It does me no joy. Uh, I want to be able to celebrate. Nintendo just announced that the Switch has outsold the NES. 61 million units. Um, I'm not surprised. I actually said that in Monday's podcast. I said they're probably around 60 million now with the uh, uh, Switch. And here they are at 61 million. I'm just going to try to... I'm going to uh, pop out this chat so I don't have to turn my head so far to see what you guys are saying. Give me a second here. Um, I'm scared to do anything. Now that my stream's going, I don't want to affect anything here, but I got to do that. Uh, so I don't end up with Batman neck. <laughs> so, yeah, like I want to be able to celebrate Nintendo's success with this Switch. But I can't, uh, one, because they're having me, or they're asking me to rebuy games I already bought as a core Nintendo fan. And two, these sales have done almost nothing for me as a fan, as a gamer. I, it's hard for me to celebrate these because it's like, what have they really brought me? They haven't brought me anything. Uh, or they brought me a couple of things, I guess. I mean... But I feel like, you know, most of the stuff that's on Switch, as long as it was somewhat successful, uh, we would have gotten anyway. 
uh, like Octopus. Maybe if it was less successful, they would be trying harder to get people to buy it and by making more games. Uh, I'm starting to feel like they're just complacent because the thing is just selling and they don't have to do much. It's just like, hey, everything, make it portable. It's portable now. So that's justification enough. And I've never been on that. Oh, it's portable, so it's okay, train. Um, I can lay down in bed. Like, I don't need to. I'm a gamer. I can sit up. I'm sitting up right now. Uh, I had a stream a couple, uh, not too long ago, a week ago, uh, where I sat here for four and a half hours <laughs> and spoke to a live stream. So it's a, I can sit up and play my games. I don't need to relax and lay back in bed. Uh, I don't have to do any of that stuff. It's cool to be able to play on the go. You guys, you know, see me when I travel. But I'm not traveling right now, so portable really doesn't do a whole lot for me. And it's hard to experience portable on Switch anyway because the Joy-Cons suck. So, um, well, not for me because I bought, obviously, the, the Split Pad Pro. But that's a purchase I had to go out and buy because I'm the Joy-Cons just aren't really comfortable for me because they're too small. <laughs> Uh, in handheld mode and they start going wonky on you after a few months um, so it's hard for me to even enjoy uh, that uh, without me having to make an extra purchase so they've gotten lazy um, I really miss Awada because I believe that none of this would be going on if Awada was around um and I've talked about it before. I talked about the Ambassadors program on 3DS. And when that program happened, there wasn't nearly as many uh, install base um, as there is on Switch right now. Um, or as there was on Wii U. Um, if you look at the box, it's hard to see from here, but there's the... The Nintendo Land little circle thing, let you know Nintendo Land's in there. But there's also, right next to it, the Digital Deluxe Program. Giving you an incentive for buying digital games. Um, and I'm, I'm just like, if Awada was here, there is no way, no way in hell he would be allowing this to happen. He would totally have an ambassadors-type program for Wii U owners, for these Wii U ports. Undeniably, I, I, I believe it 100%. Where, because here's the thing, you know, if you didn't do this, that's, that's too bad on you. But at least this would be something. We registered all of our software, all of our Nintendo software. They have it on my profile. They know everything I bought. Day one, I have, a, you know, I have the, re, the code, the uh, registration code. And, that's, and it's only for a certain amount of time that you can register your stuff. So that is expired right now. So it's not like you can go out and buy a used game, a used copy of Pikmin, and then try to register it today because it's not going to work. It's expired. So you had to be somebody who bought it at or around the time the game came out, within a year, I think. Um, and so you know I bought this game. So why not give me an incentive as a core Nintendo fan, as a fan who supported your weakest selling console ever, why not give me an incentive? Uh, give me a cut for that Pikmin. Because I would like to play the new stuff, you know? But I don't want to pay $60 for it when I paid $60 for Pikmin 3 already. Um, and I made that mistake. I made that mistake, and I can't, you know, I can't hide from it. Uh, with Mario Kart 8, um, I have, obviously I bought Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, here's Mario Kart 8, um, and I have all the DLC already, I paid for the DLC, because it was super cheap, they had a nice, again, another nice deal for the fans, uh, with the, with the DLC on here, so all the DLC that you get on, uh, Deluxe, I already bought, so it would have been really nice, um, to say, hey, for all you fans, like put it in that trailer, all the people who bought Mario Kart 8, all the people who bought Pikmin 3, and Captain Toad, and New Super Mario Brothers U, and you already got the DLC for it with Luigi U, and you know this is most likely coming. 
um, and Tokyo Mirage Session, Sharper and Fee, and, uh, you know, what, uh, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, and now Pikmin 3, um, Deluxe. Those of you who bought that game, registered that game uh, through Nintendo's website, we'll give you half off for it. $30. I remember um, EA doing that. EA did that on Wii U for, uh, what was it, Need for Speed, Most Wanted You. I bought that game. I got that game for $30 brand new just for registering with whatever EA, whatever their uh, online thing was. And it gave me a $30 cut, $30 off, half off for that game. And you're telling me you can't do that for a seven-year-old? This game is seven years old. You're telling me in seven years you can't make a sequel to this? Give me a break. Especially with the success of the Switch. Again, what am I getting out of Switch's success as a gamer? What am I getting as a consumer for what how Switch is selling? Especially, again, being another day one person on the switch you know at this point still my favorite where is it uh, my f no that's not it where did i put it did i drop it or did i not even do i not even have it over here anyway oh it's right here my favorite <laughs> experience on the switch is a wii u game so even this game <laughs> is a port from Wii U. Now, obviously, it's, you know, technically, uh, it came out same day. So it's, you know, a cross-gen title. It's the same game. Um, I think you can even get the DLC for this one, right? You can even get the DLC that came out. Um, so at this point, like, the most hot for me, again, for me, um, the two most high-profile games that I got on uh, Switch that were new experiences um, were Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which you know, I like, but it's uh, I like others better, and uh, Super, Mario, Super Mario Odyssey. It was 2017. It's 2020. And there doesn't seem to be a whole lot on the horizon, except for another Wii U port. And, it, and they're, they're releasing it like it's some big holiday title. And I said this a long time ago, like, I, okay, bring Wii U ports, but don't act like there's some big new thing. But that's what they're acting like. They're definitely charging like that. And it's so despicable that they took off Pikmin 3 completely took it off the eShop. They didn't just, you know, change the price. I'm sure that's what they're going to do. They're going to jump the price up to 60 bucks and charge you the same much for the Wii U game on the eShop as they're charging for the Switch game with all this extra stuff. Shady. Shady. Like, what? What is the true Switch experience? I guess... I don't know. Would it be Odyssey? I don't know. Let me see. Because, um, you know, Smash is, you know, very much Wii U assets bumped up a bit. Like, what? Somebody tell me. Cause I, 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 you know, I stopped. I got smart after Mario Kart 8, um, which you know I justified. Um, I didn't pay full price for it, so that was one good thing for me. And <clears throat> you know, obviously they had the DLC, but they added. You know, I, I talked about it. You know, the online stuff they added for me was huge. Um, and you know, but still. If I had known we'd be here, I'd have never bought that. But not that I would change anything. It is the number one selling game on Switch. A Wii U port. 
That's embarrassing to me. That's embarrassing. I just, wow. Again, we you didn't sell well, but boy, they cared about the people who bought it. They cared about the people who were there, you know, supporting it. At least the WADA did. And I remember there was all those people. Um, Nintendo fans alike, not just them haters, but Nintendo fans alike. Oh, uh, you know, maybe it's time for a water to move on. We need new leadership. Well, here you go. You got it. And it'd be one thing, it'd be one thing if the Switch was far and away better than Wii U in all these categories. But the only thing, at this point, the only thing is better than Wii U at is uh, bringing 360 games. Because the Wii U, I thought that's what was going to happen to Wii U. I thought there would be some nice, you know, titles coming. And there were some. There were some in the beginning, obviously. Um, after the fail, the sales fell off, those uh, those ports and, you know, uh, <clears throat> third-party uh, multi-plat stopped coming. But it's, it feels like, it's starting to feel like Nintendo is like, well, you know, the Wii U didn't do well. We're going to re-up. <laughs> We're going to recoup. Uh, and the, the Wii U was a profitable console. I mean, I'm not sure how profitable it was. Um, so it's not like they lost money. They just said, we didn't make enough money. Um, and I can understand that. But just to, re to do the same thing, I mean, maybe backwards compatible... Uh, or backwards compatibility was a thing uh, that was stopping this from happening on the, say, the Wii. Now, the Wii got some, uh, you know, Wii-specific motion uh, ports from GameCube, um, but it didn't have a whole lot. And again, like I said, it was still an SD console, so you couldn't get us on the HD remaster um, when you went from G GameCube to Wii, and um, it was backwards compatible. So that made it harder for them to just say, um, let's re-up what we didn't get on GameCube. Because that's kind of what they do with GameCube. They kind of said, you know, we have a good system here. And they did. Hardware-wise, everything was good. And they were like, we let's just kind of do this again, but offer motion controls. But here's the thing. There was a lot of, and I'll get to that when I get to my Wii stuff, my Wii talk. There was a lot of experience that, experiences on Wii that were very specific to the controller, um, you know, like them or not like them. And there were a lot of uh, third-party exclusives because of, quote-unquote, the limitations of the Wii and the controller. And I thought, when I looked at this Switch in January of 2017 at this event, and they emphasized... Uh, you know, the HD rumble and, you know, the split Joy-Cons, you know, controls and all that. I envisioned that they were still going to keep doing that and we'd still get experiences like that. But, man, it has been pretty, pretty poor. Few and far between we've had something that's like we or Switch specific where it's like, oh, they're really utilizing this feature, really utilizing that. It's just been, let's slap it on there. And it's portable, and that's good enough. And it's not good enough for me. And like I said, I'm questioning the core. I'm questioning if Nintendo cares about its core fans anymore. Because it's not doing stuff that I would deem to care about the core. It's, you can do both. It's not like you can't cater to core fans and cater to these Switch fans who just want to play portably, who want to play their 360 games portably. It's not like you can't do both, because you can. Um, because here's the thing. You have a lot or at least enough stopgap coming from other companies because of your sales. Now, like I said, they're just you know remasters and whatnot, 360 games. And there's been a few, uh, and I've pointed them out, there have been a few current gen games that have come over as well your dooms and your wolfensteins but how can you be 
if, if you're a person that was upset about Wii U and its ports, how in the hell <laughs> and what universe do you have to come with your specific mathematics to explain how it's okay for Switch ports uh, that are super downgraded? Like, the Wii U's coming from 360 was nowhere near uh, the downgrade that you're seeing current gen games on Switch. So if you are upset about late ports, you know, less... If you're one of those people complaining on Wii U about late ports and, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, watered-down ports of current console games, how in the hell... <laughs> Can you be silent? Like, I personally don't care. I was never one of those people that complained. I enjoyed, you know, the games that, oh my God, the frame rate. I never noticed a lot of the stuff that could people complain about when it came to ports on the Wii U. I was enjoying my Batman Arkham Origins and my Batman uh, Arkham City Armored Edition. I enjoyed the hell out of it. And people, you know, I hear people who complain about the frame rate. I was like, I never noticed it. it Definitely wasn't bad enough to where it bothered me, but people complained about that. So if you're one of those people, and you look at like Witcher Three, oh that's cool. What? Wait, wait, what? How can you say that now? Like, I don't. Is it just the sales? It's the sales, right? It's the popularity. And it's. I said this. Like, I don't want to be uh, Nostradamus up in here, but I said it. During this, during the Wii U era, uh, when we, uh, when it was the NX, I said, the Switch comes out and it's popular. All this stuff people complain about when it comes to Nintendo will wash away. They won't even think about any of this stuff they complain about on Wii U, on Switch, and they're not. And you see them, the apologists. The, oh, there's harder things, there's more important things to worry about. Defendos, please. <laughs> like, I don't want to hear that tired, tired argument. Because this is not the first time it's been used. People act like this is the first time we've had real world issues to deal with. No, maybe you weren't paying attention, but we've had... Um, uh, social and racial uh, unrest riots for a long time. Not riots. I mean, um, got me saying riots. Um, we've had uh, marches and and protests and outrage and all this stuff. We've had for years. I'm not just talking about you know. I'm not talking 20 years ago. I'm talking about last year and the year before. Maybe you weren't paying attention, but we've had protests for quite some time on a lot of things. Uh, marches, I've been to marches. See, I can do this stuff and still talk about video games on my video game channel. I can, I can go out there and, 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 uh, and, like I said, protest and march and do all that stuff that I have done. I can do that and I can come home and, on my video game channel and talk about video games and not try to use this, oh well, there's other things going on in the world I'm a father, I'm a husband with two kids, I teach, I can still do all those things and talk about my hobby in a separate manner. So please stop. They're not going to stop because they've been doing it for years. But <laughs> just stop with this coat of armor you throw up anytime somebody complains about stuff that you don't like to hear. I don't want to hear you talking about that. There's more important things going on in the world. No shit, Sherlock. We know that. There's always been more important things going on in the world. There's always been unrest. There's always been something going on that people should be paying attention to. And you know what? I do pay attention to that stuff. I participate. And I can still talk about video games when it comes to video games and separate that into the bubble into the video game bubble and talk about that. So when I hear that defense, that bogus reasoning, 
that can be used for anything at any time. It really can. It can be used for anything at any time. When I hear that, I automatically turn off your opinion, your opinion to me, when I see that, is automatically null and void. Because you're not willing to deal with facts and, and the issue <laughs> at hand in video games on this video game channel. You don't want, oh, yeah, it hurts me. <laughs> it hurts my Nintenderness. <laughs> and it's just crazy. Crazy talk. So let me see. You guys are saying, uh, you feel free to vent because this is where we're venting. This is, like I said, this is a therapy session. And uh, we're going to vent here. That's what we're going to do. And wow, I have uh, the one of my highest uh, concurrent viewers in quite some time. It, it feels like a lot of fans. Um, I don't know if you're here to be mad at me or <laughs> here to agree, but, you know, thank you for joining. And uh, I'm going to miss because there's a lot, there's a lot of chatter here. So I'm going to go back and uh, try to catch up with what you guys are saying <clears throat> while I think about where I work on my next point in my brain here. So um let's see let's see we get to relevant pikmin 3 portable yes please eh, again i talked about it doesn't move me here's the thing about pikmin 3 specifically uh for me again uh the best way to play pikmin 3 is let me show you i wasn't planning on this but it happens to be right here so why not i'm dropping things which is fine. Here's the best way to play Pikmin 3. These two bad boys here, along with your map screen on here. That is the definitive way to play Pikmin 3. Uh, you have pinpoint accuracy with your Wii Remote and Nunchuck when it comes to, um, what do you call it, um, targeting. Targeting your enemies and whatnot. Being able to uh, gather your Pikmin it's so much less frustrating being able to point and click, basically. And so Pikmin 3 on Switch does nothing. It's a, it's, it's a step backwards. Yeah, there's new content, but I don't really care about, um, what do you call it, um, difficulty modes. That doesn't move me. New story stuff, you know, basically what was supposed to be Pikmin 4, uh, you know, that was chopped down to just be basically DLC at this point for Pikmin 3. That I find interesting, but not $60 interesting. Again, um, how about some love for your core fans, the way Awada used to do, um, and give us a discount. Because like I said, all my games are registered. All my Wii U games, Nintendo first party games are registered, you know, on, on a, I never can think of the name of, what is it called? Club Nintendo. Is it still Club Nintendo or they changed the name? All my stuff's registered there. It's all in my account. You can go in and see what I bought. It's all there. So if you're not going to bring that DLC to my Wii U version, which I would understand why you wouldn't at this point, why not give me a discount so I can buy this game and feel like you give a damn about core Nintendo fans, the non-shill ones, because there are some shill core Nintendo fans out there either zip tight or making the excuses that I presented uh, a couple minutes ago. It may be profitable, but damn, the Wii U was done dirty. Yes. Um, says Peasant Lemon. <laughs> I love that name. Um, we had a deal with Pretendos. Now we got... Oh, we, we had to deal with Pretendos. Now we got a deal with Defendos. Shaking my head, Navon Wise. Yes. I already own Pikmin 3 on Wii U. Don't need to buy it again. Need to do I Lupachilo. Like I said, it is the definitive version. Anyway, I feel like Switch was what the Wii U was meant to be. Yeah. And, you know, they. I think Nintendo kind of hinted at that. This, the Switch uh, was what Nintendo probably wanted to do, but it was too expensive at the time to get it, you know, where it is now. So now it's like, all right, now we can do that and offer up Wii U games again. I wouldn't have as much problem with if you didn't just completely ignore your core fans 
who were there for you day one. And this isn't, I'm not being entitled here. This is something Nintendo has done before. Nintendo has always done in their past. So don't act like I'm entitled just because I'm saying they should look out for the core fans. They've done this. I haven't had to ask them to do this before. They've done this before. So give me a break. And when they didn't, like on Wii, um, let's say the Wii ports from GameCube, um, like Pikmin 2 and new play control stuff, those games were not full price games. You know, and the Wii was selling pretty well as well. But they weren't super greedy and said, all right, we're going to resell these games full price. They didn't do that. Those games were, what, $30? So give me a break. There's no defense. All right. I'm not really worried. Sales shows <clears throat> the issues are exaggerated, says Harui. Uh, Joycey, I feel like... All right, I read that already. Uh, right chance. Metroid Prime 4 been in the wind for ages, but we get Pikmin 3 Deluxe. LOL, the Wii, uh, the Wii U will save you during this dry period. I mean, you totally botched Metroid Prime. And I, I was one of the people like, oh, maybe uh, Ben and Namco can pull it off, you know? I don't think they would, Nintendo would just throw this out there if they weren't confident in what Ben and Namco showed them they could do. And no, they, it must have been really bad. Because we got Other M. <laughs> and that was allowed to be released. Um, shout out to you Other M fans. But what Ben Namco was working on must have been really bad for Nintendo to say, nah, we're going to start all over. Even though we got a lot of core fans that were going to be upset about this, we're going to scrap everything you're doing and start over from scratch with Retro Studios, who we've forgotten about, who hasn't made a game themselves in what five years five years no it's been more than that when did tropical freeze come out tropical freeze came out early 2013 that's the last game retro studios has made that's seven years ago um i'm glad they're working on prime uh the uh, you know i hope their pitch was really good <clears throat> but i don't know if i trust nintendo at this point uh, so who knows how that's going to turn out and when it'll turn out because, you know, Retro Studios has a history of, like, <laughs> a history of you know, long development cycles. I bought two Wii U, says Arui. Um, Trizzy Nah, I have Pikmin 3 on Wii U. I'd be Pikmin Deluxe if it, I'd buy Pikmin Deluxe if it weren't $60. Exactly. I don't know if I'd buy it at that point still. Um, but I'm sure a lot of people would, you know, like yourself, would probably rebuy it again. Um, Harui, PS5 has what exactly? I must have missed something on that. I'm buying Pikmin 3 DX to support Pikmin 4. That's not how it works, bro. Nintendo doesn't need you to buy Pikmin 3 to support Pikmin 4. Why do people come up with these rules? These internal rules that only happen in their own brains. Nintendo doesn't need you to welfare support <laughs> Pikmin 4 by buying Pikmin 3. That's nonsense. We did, did we need to buy <clears throat> Mario Kart 8 to get Mario Kart 9? We still haven't gotten that. But Mario Kart 8 sold really well on Wii U, especially with that install base. So that idea of welfare support of these game companies is needs to go away. That's not how this works. You know, Pikmin 1 sold a million copies. You know what? They made Pikmin 2. And Pikmin 2 sold about a million copies. And you know what? They eventually made Pikmin 3. It didn't come out on Wii, but they bought they made Pikmin 1 and 2 again uh, for um, for Wii Play Control. And then they made Pikmin 3. They don't need you to support them to make their to make their first party IPs. And I don't know where that mentality comes from. Nabon wise, exactly what I mean. I don't mind these ports, but that's the majority of what we get, it seems. Right, I don't mind ports. I said this from day one. Don't care about bringing over ports. I get it. 
It's business. Blah, 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 blah. Got it. But they're not new big releases. They're ports. They're re-releases. And they shouldn't be treated like that. They shouldn't be treated like there's some big new thing. It's a slap in the face to core Nintendo fans. Uh, Pikmin 4 was definitely Hey Pikmin, but fans wouldn't like that. Yeah, I mean, I thought that at first, but again, there was that follow-up. There was that follow-up interview that came out after Hey Pikmin was released. And the guy specifically said, um, I forgot how it was worded, but he's basically... He basically said, hey, Pikmin was not Pikmin 4. I think this DLC stuff was Pikmin 4, and they changed course um, after they saw what the Wii or the, what the Switch was doing in sales and how stuff like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, they saw that and they were like, we can do that again, save some money in development time, and just, you know, make this extra stuff, and people will buy it happily. You got somebody, Harui, saying he's going to buy Pikmin 3. Deluxe to support Pikmin 4. So you got people that will spend that money again. So it's a pandemic. All right. Thank you, Harui, for it's a pandemic, though. Um, it's a pandemic. And yet and still, Microsoft and Sony continue to drop games. And they've had big games this year. Not so much Microsoft, but Sony has dropped two massive games this year. They just had a state of play where they showed a bunch more stuff coming to PS4 this year and early next year. And they're dropping new consoles this year with new games. It's a pandemic. is not an excuse for these game companies. It should not be an excuse, okay? Because you're still able to function. There's people still going to their job. There's people working at home. <laughs> a lot of us are so enough with the excuses please you heard it with Wii U oh well you know and I took that excuse but it, it shouldn't have been a thing Wii U games were slow to come because Nintendo just wasn't used to HD you know development and that was a big you know learning curve for them a multi-billion dollar gaming company wasn't ready for HD gaming, something that had started in 2005. They weren't ready in 2012. But we took that and we just accepted it. All right, well, you weren't ready. You had the Wii and you were doing SD, but you weren't experimenting. Don't you work on your next console? That's what they always say. We work on our next console right after we drop the last one so you weren't experimenting you had to know that you were going to go with hd so you weren't getting getting your engineers and developers ready your internal studios ready for hd in seven years <laughs> of hd gaming like it, it it's nonsense people nonsense uh, right chance. Joycey Johnson, I sincerely disagree. The Wii U seemed to be a co compilation of ideas that Nintendo Pass, Switch, and Wii U are very different. I don't think they're very different. Um, uh, Nintendo themselves hinted or alluded to the fact that, you know, the Switch was a culmination of all their systems. And you can see it. I mean, just look at it. It's obviously what they wanted to do with Switch, but then. Couldn't afford it. They wanted to make it more portable. Um, RZA, 336. Wii U currently sitting as king as the best console of this generation. <laughs> Geek Life. I'm hoping they are not Final fantasy in Pikmin 4 with multiple engine changes and other craziness. I, I hope, hope not too, Jay. Ah, <clears throat> 20 years. The record will reflect it as... Sure, as the record shows that the Saturn was a great console in its generation. I mean, you don't. I don't need 20 years. I already know the Saturn was great, and Sega, you know, that generation did do well for them. They didn't. 
spit out new versions of Saturn games on the Dreamcast. You know? They put out some all new great software. Um, and, you know, due to the fact that they were just too much in the hole, it, it didn't help. Uh, let's see. Um, where in the info detailing the new content? I don't know what that is. Terminator Juice, what you're talking about there. Name on Wise says Right Chance. The Switch by itself should be good enough to command great games. I grew up with Sony, but I know Nintendo has great ideas and IPs, and it's a shame we Nintendo doesn't get the great third party. Yeah, the Switch should, you know, it shouldn't just be a port system. Like I said, it should have, um, you know, like I said, uh, exclusive third party stuff. And it has a couple of things out there. There are a few things that I've pointed to that I won't go over again. Um, but there are some. But it has a big enough install base to where, you know, a company can say, yeah, let's do that. Let's make something specifically for that. And some games have come out that should have been specifically for Switch. You know, like, I don't know, um, Starlink. Uh, let's see, Four Kawa is pretty much like Yamauchi. No. Um, I, he about that money, but Yamauchi wasn't just about money. <laughs> you know? He was a hardliner. He was a business guy. But he understood customers. And Nintendo doesn't seem to understand that value in customers anymore. That was their call to fame. Like, the Nintendo Hotline and Nintendo Power and, like I said, all the incentives they used to offer to their fans. Stefan Krauss, now only Color Splash left. <laughs> There's a couple more. Um, Harui, you're going to... You, oh, I'm not even, even going to go there anymore. I'm, like I said, when you come up with those excuses, your opinion goes completely for me. It just disappears. Uh, Kimishima era has been lazy at best. <laughs> uh, well, at least he had some bangers in there. You know, it wasn't because of him. He happened He happened upon that, but uh, Furukawa, his era, is really showing itself. Um, let's see. Uh, Trizina still needs Xenoblade Chronicles X. It's on Wii U. You can get it. And the best way to play it, uh, again, for me, was using GamePad, GamePad, and Pro Controller together. I had my map screen. I could you know, traverse and look out where I was going and see what was coming up. Had that here. Played the game on the TV. And I had this uh, Pro Controller. 80 hour pro controller to do my thing. Um, let's see. Shin Megami Tensei 5. You're waiting for that, says Arui. Origami King equals Color Splash 2. Nah, Origami King is definitely better. I haven't played a ton of it, but it's certainly better than Color Splash 2 or Color Splash. Um, but, you know, it kind of feels like that. Obviously, they could have used assets. Visually, Color Splash was visually a stunning looking game. Um, so, you know, if it looks better, uh, Origami King, it's not by much. I'm sure it's the same engine. Um, and I'm getting Nocturne, says Array. All right. Uh, sorry, T, but I'm a big advocate of, but it's portable now <laughs> because I travel weekly. But yeah, the Joy-Con drift is a huge problem for me right now with that. Yeah, I mean, that just kills me portably. Like like I said, I have to use my Split Pad Pro portably. I don't even use Joy-Cons portably anymore. Um, and I got my Joy-Cons fixed, but I don't trust them. I mean, I know they have a design flaw, so they're going to go out again. So there's no point uh, in me getting used to them again. I use them... You know, I'm going to use them again when I play stuff like Breath of the Wild, run through that again, and when I run through uh, Odyssey again, because that's how I like to play those games, uh, and be able to feel that HD rumble, you know, that thing that 
Nintendo cared about in 2017, but don't care about anymore. Um, they put all this stuff in the con controllers and stuff, and they don't use it. Uh, same with Xbox. If Xbox One was at the bottom, we'd never have Game Pass or backwards. Wasn't at the bottom. We'd never have Game Pass or backwards compatibility. Exactly. If, if Xbox came out and they did great, and you know, you know, all those practices worked, like um, you know, not being able to trade your game, all that stuff that they were trying to do. If all that worked, imagine what the X would be. I wouldn't be buying an X because it would be so anti-consumer. But because uh, Microsoft got their behinds whooped and spanked into submission, they turned around and was like, "We gotta change course." And they're Microsoft. Microsoft Xbox is the most consumer friendly setup in gaming. I would never have thought I've said that in 2000, say in 2006, that my 2006 self would have never said that. I never thought I'd say that. But Microsoft is hands, you know, you know, it's, it's hands of, you know, hands up better than anybody else right now as far as consumer uh, friendliness and just value Microsoft Xbox wow and you know what I'm rewarding them for that I'm buying a Xbox one X day one because I like what I'm seeing I don't love everything what I'm saying but I, I I totally like that I feel very confident I'm very happy about the fact that I can bring all my old games over to a new console and have them benefit from the power of that console. And not be charged $60 for a game I already bought. And given, I'm given no incentive to buy again. The virtual console would have been still around, says EJ Johnson. I must have missed something you said earlier. Same with, uh, I read that already. Uh, Lupacillo said that, by the way, with the Xbox stuff. Um, uh, he wouldn't let it happen if he would have had to help with the development. Iwata was that guy for real. Yes. J yes, you are correct. Um, straight up. This is Navon Wise. It's been three years since what? I'm missing that. I don't know what that is. Conversations about. <clears throat> Super Pokey Fan 95. Love Mario Kart 8. Came out days before I graduated high school. Fun times. It is a great game. Um, preach on Brother T, says Jonathan Reed. Uh, Harui, DLC, and new side story. I think he's talking about uh, what's in Pikmin 3 Deluxe. And there is new stuff. I mean, you, you can justify the Deluxe title. But again, you're completely ignoring your core Nintendo fans. Completely ignoring them. And that's not a Nintendo I know. Maybe these Switch dudes <laughs> aren't used to that. You know, There's a lot of fans. It, this is what kills me. Because there's a lot of people was like, man... I haven't bought a Nintendo console since GameCube. And I'm buying a Switch. I love the Switch. You think the Switch competes with the GameCube? Yet yeah, sell it sold better. But games wise, in three years, I already did the go look at the last stream. It was a long one. But I already showed you it doesn't compete. And again, without Nintendo having a handheld to cater to. They don't have that. So that's always going to be the crux of this argument, is that they don't have a handheld to cater to anymore. So they should not have these problems putting out software. And here's the thing. You can cater to the core fans, do these little rinky-dink games, uh, do your Switch ports. But here's it on Wii U. When Nintendo had trouble with you know, developing for HD, they didn't have trouble with that. They made a port. Not a, it's not a port. It's a remaster. 
an HD remaster of a GameCube game they made on on uh, on on Wii U, and they made it in six months. They said six months. How hard, you know? Again, you can cater, you can do your remasters and not have you know huge budget issues and long development cycles. You can do that and also cater to your core fans by doing what you did with this, doing it to F Zero and adding online. That will be catering to your core fans and still keeping your prices down, your your budget prices and your your budget down. You can do Star Fox Assault HD. <laughs> I think that would cater to your core fan base. You know? And put that online. My God. It would make me f feel good about <laughs> having to pay for a Switch or, yeah, Switch Online. Being able to dogfight online on Star Fox Assault HD. That would be great. I'd be happy. Wave Race. Blue Storm HD. That would be great. You know, that would be a great port or a great remaster to do. You can cater to your greed <laughs> while catering to your hardcore fan base as well. You could have released Metroid Prime HD by now. I mean, that's why we got these. The reason we got these is because this wasn't ready. <laughs> they kept delaying it because they were doing cool new things with the physics engine and all this stuff. So they kept delaying it. So they gave us these to hold us core fans over. Why didn't you do that? Why haven't you done that on Switch? And again, when they gave us these, they had a poppin' ass handheld console to deal with. And cater and put great games on that handheld console along with this stuff. So don't tell me what they can't do. Your argument is not helping you as a gamer, as a Nintendo gamer. Your defense is not benefiting you whatsoever. Ah, all right. Lupacillo says, when Iwata died, he took Nintendo Soul and Mojo with him. I wholeheartedly agree. I don't know. I have no, you know, I used to have a connection to Nintendo, emotional connect. I don't have it anymore. Miyamoto's moving, you know, he's getting older. You know, he's not out in front. Iwata's gone. Reggie's gone. I don't have that attachment. And, and, and you, you know, that stuff happens. We understand. They, they can't stay there forever. That stuff happens. But you put that together with, you know, where is it? Where did I put those bad boys? I got this stuff right in front of me, and I can't see it. Because there's no way it should be. Oh, it's under my laptop or under my keyboard here <clears throat> so you put out a pretty whack uh, Yoshi game on on switch when the Wii U one was leaps and bounds better Yoshi's Willy World destroys crafted world and while this is a different type of Kirby game this game was way more fun <laughs> to me than uh, Star Allies. This is way more challenging to me than Star Allies. This is not a traditional Kirby game. This is tilt and tumble, basically. Um, <clears throat> or Cur uh, Canvas Curse. Uh, you know, this is like a... Uh, uh, it's not the same game, but it's the same concept. You know? And, I mean, I haven't played enough of it but at this point uh what is it uh 
Paper Mario Origami King it isn't leaps and bounds better than Splash, Color Splash. It feels better, but it's not leaps and bounds better. Color Splash got a bad rap because it's on Wii U, basically. Um, it does have an annoying mechanic that you have to keep painting your cards. That it can become a bit annoying, but the game itself is still pretty good. Um, Breath of the Wild is a Wii U game. You know, Odyssey, I love Odyssey. I love it better than uh, 3D World, but 3D World is freaking awesome too. So, again, you, you're not where you should be. Having no handheld to deal with and having all these sales, you love to show your sales figures. Super Poker Fan 95 says you're getting Wii U ports. <laughs> you mean I'm I'm buying them? No, I'm not buying them. I only bought one and I will not buy any more. Uh Cornelius, what's up? A deep satisfaction of so of showing support. Um he says, EJ Johnson, can we get a Golden Sun? Right. Can we get these games that Nintendo fans have been wanting? You can you can cater to your core by doing those things. But I, I feel like you forgot about us. I feel like we're forgotten in this new Nintendo. And when the Nintendo haters should have real be really be jumping, this is the system they should really be jumping on. But they, I guess they don't feel confident in jumping on the Switch because it sells. You can still talk about the content or lack thereof. You can still talk about the online service. Service. I mean, Nintendo's online service should be leaps and bounds better than anybody else's. And I mean, as far as what it gives you. Not so much, you know, it's going to be hard to beat live and whatnot because it's feature rich and Mar Microsoft is really good at that. They that you know they've been in that business for a long time, but I should feel really good as a Nintendo fan with what the blueprints are. The blueprints are the Wii Shop and WiiWare and we uh, 3DS Online, which is e, 3DS eShop is great in the online, and Wii U was another step in the right direction features and stuff uh, voice chat wise and me verse and all that stuff that we don't have anymore and this is a complete step back and nobody's complaining people were complaining about Wii U and what it didn't have as far as that online stuff and switch has less and nobody's talking about it none of these shills or whatever you want to call them are not talking about it and they were the, some of the main voices complaining. <laughs> and I'm like, who are you? Then just don't have an opinion on anything. Because you have no credibility at this point. Uh, Wii U version is better anyway. Uh, says Lupachilo. Yes, thankfully they put the DLC on Wii U. It's not going to happen, Super Fan. I doubt it. I really doubt that. Um, where is the complete edition Breath of the Wild with all the DLC for $60? I'm wondering that too. Like, I want that to be a thing for not only Breath of the Wild, but Smash Brothers. Like, I don't like the fact that some of those characters are digital only. Like, I want those characters on the cart at some point. But I don't think they'll ever do that. I just, I don't trust Nintendo enough to do that kind of stuff. Uh, where's Xenoblade Chronicles X? Says EJ Johnson. It's on Wii U. <laughs> uh, Wii U was a gap filler, apparently. Treasy Na says, honestly, what more could they do with Pikmin? They've been to Earth. I mean, PNF 404, three times now, collecting human junk and food. What next? I mean, I could make a video about that, talking about what Pikmin can do, but what's the point of that? 
you know, like, um, it is a, you know, it's a strategy game. It's a special type of strategy game, a Nintendo style strategy game. What, you know, it's premise. But you can say, well, what can Nintendo do with F Zero, or what can Nintendo do with Wave Race, or what can they do with Star Fox? You can put that in there for everything. They could find something to do. <laughs> you know, that doesn't warrant them just reselling you the same game for full price seven years later. I mean that. No, <laughs> they could do something. What could they do with? Zelda, at the, uh, when um, Skyward Sword came out, people were like, oh man, this Zelda, you know, um, uh, this, <clears throat> what do you call it? Um, the Zelda formula is getting old, it's getting stale, blah, blah, blah. Boom, Breath of the Wild. Whoa. They did something with it. Uh, Mario Odyssey, you know, with Cappy. What can you do with Mario in 3D? Uh, Cappy. That's what you can do. <laughs> nice new game mechanic. You don't have to completely rebuild the wheel. wheel, But you can add to it. They can make a new game. Uh, even Smash is built off the Wii U. Says Terminator Juice. Stop dodging Wii U. It changed the game. <laughs> says right chance uh, Lupachilo Xenoblade X will be tough to port that's such a huge game and is gamepad heavy um, yeah I, I just don't I mean they can find a way I mean obviously they can put everything into a menu a pause menu um, they can make it happen but to me that's a lesser version of the game that is a downgrade. Like Pikmin 3 is a da a step backwards control-wise. Why would I want to go back to the GameCube controls after the Wii, uh, Wii, uh, what is it called? The Wii, play, what do you call it? Was it Wii Play? That was its own game. Uh, can we talk about the people who said Wii U had no games? Now, lopping these or loving these ports, I'm guessing that's what you're saying. Yeah, like <laughs> that's the, like the obvious thing. We we you games, blah 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 blah. I have no games, but yet people are totally cool with the Wii U games coming to Switch. Can we get some new games for my new console? Just a few. You ain't got to do nothing crazy. You got to have a better output than you have. You have more resources. You have more resources. You have more resources when it comes to money because of the sales of the Switch, but also you're charging for online now. So there's more resources there. You have more resources because you made a pretty good amount of money off of uh, your cell phone games. You know, you're stopped doing that. And you don't have to hog your resources with a popular handheld. They, you should have more. No more excuses. Stop. Juice. Arms is one of the real, truly, one of the few truly Switch games. Agreed. Arms. One, two, Switch also, says Right Chance. <laughs> uh. Switch experience, arms, <laughs> says Kahuna. Uh, Astro Chain is really good, though. Yes, Astro Chain is a good game, great game. Um, but that is, uh, that's, uh, oh my God, I can't remember their name now. Platinum, that's Platinum. That's not Nintendo. Nintendo uh, funded a portion of that game, and they own the IP, but that is Platinum. Nintendo really messed up when they get when they let go or disbanded NST and left field. They need those companies. Because when you make a system like the Switch, where even though it's super popular, a lot of these people can ignore it or bring over, you know, seven to ten year old games. Um you need your own studios coming up with stuff. 
I'm currently having a blast on my GameCube. You know? Looking at all the stuff. I was playing um, Battalion Wars last night, and I was having so much fun. It would be nice to have AA games like that, that Nintendo makes. I think Battalion Wars was Intelligent Systems, if I'm not mistaken. They've cut too many of their resources. They've, you know, squandered them. Uh, honestly, I don't think we've gotten a Switch experience. We don't even have wallpaper for the home screen. Shaking my head, says Joycey. Yes, Joycey. <laughs> this is embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Just give, give me, give me a second. Give me a second. I'll be. All right, so this little system here puts Switch to shame features-wise. That's embarrassing. Look at that. I have it on like random uh, back, uh, what do you call it? Uh, random um, screens and whatnot. So can you hear that? The music for it and everything. I mean, Folders! Folders! How cool is that? You know what folders are, right? You don't have that weird switch basement <laughs> that your games go if they don't fit on the, the main screen. You don't have that basement where you gotta go find them, especially if they're digital. I don't know why games are in there if they're not digital. Why do I have, why do those games go there? This stuff that's so shoddy about Switch that I don't understand coming off of systems like this. Oh, look at that. The background switched again on its own. I mean, there's no reason for this. Trizzy. Uh, damn, I've really got to get to bed. I think he's probably gone by now. <laughs> um, T, have fun, everyone, on the chat. Make sure to leave a like and have a good night. Thank you, Trizzy. Uh, Smash Wii U sold like 11 million copies. Is that right? I knew it was up there. Um, and it got a sequel. Um, <laughs> the Switch Basement. LMAO says Super Pokemon. I mean, that's what it is. It's like a basement where your games go <laughs> to get lost. Um, it's weird. It's a strange. It's strange. Uh, Terminator Juice says Nintendo was turning into what I always felt Sony was. But now Sony is the most consumer friendly and they aren't porting all their PS3 games. Yeah, I mean... They have their stuff on a digital store. If you want to buy that stuff, I, I wouldn't say they're the most consumer friendly. I, like I said, I think Xbox is. But they they don't treat they didn't treat Last Guardian like it was some big new thing, although it was <laughs> in a way. But they didn't treat um, what was the oh my gosh the uh, blah, 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 Shadow of the Colossus remake. $40, by the way. They didn't treat that like it was some big new title. You can tell by how much they priced it with. Right chance. Terminator Juice, I have to agree. I had to get PS4. Um, Visor Grunt, wouldn't be so bad if they had made new installments of some of these titles first, then went back and ported Wii U games. Like... Yeah, Tropical Freeze. Why didn't we get a sequel to that? 
You're not going to get it on Wii U? I mean, Switch at this point. And that's the problem. Because that was the argument back in the day that I presented, that I kind of walked away from. But I felt pretty confident about it. But, you know, people would say, no, 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 not so much. The argument was that these ports take took away from us getting sequels. And the naysayers, the shill sayers said, no, no. I know some side team that, you know, did the port. That company could still be working on a sequel. I don't know why they would. Why would you put out, you know, why would you spend money on making a port and then put out the sequel to it soon? I, I just don't understand that. But, no, no, no. They're not doing that. We're going to get a new Monster Hunter game only for Switch. <laughs> Uh, they're going to do a ground-up Monster Hunter game for Switch. Don't worry about Monster Hunter Worlds. Don't worry about Generations uh, from... What was that? Generations from the 3DS that got ported to the, the Switch. up to the Switch. No, no, no. Don't worry. That, they're, doing, they're doing that. But they're also doing... And they were pulling this stuff completely out of their ass just to have an argument. I was presenting what was what is, what's logical, and the defenses were completely pulled from air, from farts. <laughs> like, it came from nothing. Yes. Mario Kart 8, what, what is that, 26 million? You think they're going to put out a Mario Kart 9 anytime soon? Or it, on, the, on the Switch? Why the hell would they do that? Why would they do that? Of course they're not going to do that. There's no history or evidence to suggest otherwise. History suggests that they won't do that. Because I remember um, Super Nintendo, specifically. I really remember that era um, and the lists. Like I, I think it was Nintendo Power. And it always show you the top-selling games on Nintendo uh, Power, Power List. And it was, you know, um, Super Mario World. Um, it was uh, Legend of Zelda, a, a Link to the Past. Um, Super Metroid, you know, later on. Star Fox. Like, those things were always on the list. And I'm like, why not just let those things keep selling? None of those games got a sequel. <laughs> on Super Nintendo. Oh, well, the Super Mario Brothers 2, a World 2, uh, Yoshi's Island, that was a completely different game. Nintendo was just too scared to call the game Yoshi's Island. They had to try to throw Super Mario in it somehow to, to make people buy it because they were afraid it couldn't sell on its own, although it's a fantastic game, and it totally could have sold on its own without that stupid title. But it was no Super Mario World 2. It had nothing to do with Super Mario World. They just named it that for itself. So none of those games, none of them. I mean, it was too late for Super Metroid. But none of those games got sequels. Star Fox almost got a sequel. They said, nah, never mind. <laughs> uh, we're not going to release it. So when games do that, you rarely get a sequel. Because why disrupt those sales? When the game is selling the way like that, far and away. In a game you're making pure profit off of. Pure profit. You sell it for $60 still. You, it probably costs them $10 a game. Because of its age and Nintendo's margins. They're probably making fifty dollars per <coughs> uh, unit sold. Why in the world would you put resources into making a sequel? It makes no sense when the game is selling. It's your best-selling game on your console. Your best-selling game by far on your new console is a game that came out on your old console. Why would you make a sequel to that at this point? It makes no sense. So don't tell me. Ports don't affect sequels, because they do. 
it's pretty obvious they do. A lot of these games sold more than enough on Wii U, especially Mario Kart 8. Uh, and, you know, Smash World, that's, that wasn't a port. If you look at Nintendo's history, a lot of those games sold more than enough to warrant a sequel because a lot of times they got sequels selling what they sold on Wii U. So this... They just don't care. <laughs> and fans don't care. They care more to cover up for Nintendo than they do to, to look out for themselves. And um, my boy Clocked It made a fantastic video. Um, <clears throat> came out yesterday. Subscribe to Clocked It, please. Fantastic video. And it, was, it had to deal with um, this idea of entitlement coming from gamers. Oh, you're entitled. It's the, it's the easiest way to dismiss somebody's argument. Just call them entitled. Oh, that argument's over. Um, you win. In your own head, <laughs> apparently. But just call them entitled. It's done. So he was basically talking about how I don't care if you didn't buy a Wii U. Yeah, I don't care either. <laughs> I bought one. If you didn't buy one, that's on you. I, I shouldn't have to suffer because you didn't buy a Wii U. As a core fan, I shouldn't have to suffer. That's not entitlement. I paid my dues for my Wii U's. <laughs> you shouldn't get a... Uh, a second go around, a pat on the back for, for not buying it. Now, I understand there's reasons for a lot of people. You know, they were way younger then. You know, they had to make a choice. Uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these people who always come up with the excuse, um, well, a lot of people didn't buy the Wii U. Too bad. A lot of people didn't buy a lot of consoles. That doesn't mean you, you get to get those games all over again for the new console. When I bought that console... Why should we be catering to you? Because for the most part, a lot of these people are fair weather fans. Oh, they're riding, they're riding that, uh, that switch train right now. It's great and everything. That could turn around like that by early next year. It could be... Oh, looking, looking like Wii U. <laughs> it could turn off just like that. If these new consoles come out and they just are just performing strong from the gate. There could be a turnaround. Oh, well, they're in, they're in a different market. That, that won't affect my ass. <laughs> money is money. Family has to prioritize their spending. And the Switch is a family product. Okay? So if something comes out, the new Shiny comes out, and it has all this stuff that your kids can play on and they like it. And like I said, I talk about it all the time. A lot of kids game on Xbox. A lot. I see it all the time as a teacher. Kids always come up to me wanting my gamer tag. They want to play with me online. Um, I didn't think that was okay, but I was I was assured that it was alright as long as you know I didn't, you know I wasn't in there cussing <laughs> and acting a fool as a teacher. But uh, I was told by the board that was fine. But a lot of kids are playing on Xbox. All my Fortnite kids who want me to play Fortnite with them, which I don't like to do, they all are on Xbox. So this Wii U or this Switch gravy train could change just like that. And then what are you left with? Wanting. Waiting. <laughs> For you Edgar Allan Poe fans out there. You're going to be playing the waiting game. Because... You know, there's not going to be too many Wii U ports left. And you shouldn't be having to wait for Wii U ports. That should not be a holiday release. Pikmin 3, if anything, uh, Paper Mario is way more sensible as a holiday game than Pikmin 3. What is going on? This is strange. This is strange, Nintendo. Nintendo is usually strange, but this is very strange to me.
cheapest console and Game Pass is a pretty sweet deal. Slupachilo. Xbox One is like N64 of the 8th generation. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, Super Pokey Fan. LOL, the people with the Switch Lite getting Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Uh, need Joy-Cons to play it. <laughs> well, I think it's only... If you're doing co-op, you know, like a lot of games, you're going to need Joy-Cons. But why would you play co-op on somebody's Switch Lite screen? Uh, I just have a regular Switch and play on a TV. I don't understand. But like I said, control-wise, it's a step back. So that's what you get. Mario Kart 8 Profits alone could have funded a new F-Zero, Wave Race, Pikmin, Mario stickers type game. All kind of stuff. Exactly, Juice. Because Mario, Pro- uh, Mario Kart 8 sold, what was it, 8 million copies on the Wii U? That's not enough? You know how I many? Of course that's enough. That's way more than enough to justify a sequel. You know, everything doesn't have to do Wii numbers. You know, obviously the Wii was a phenomenon and it sold ridiculous numbers. Um, great if you could do that, but you don't need that to justify a sequel. The Mario Kart 8 you know, costs, like you said, profits could fund a lot of games, I would think, at this point. 26 million on top of 8 million, 32 million copies at mostly $60. Come on. Lurking Ghoul. Oh, thanks, Lurking Ghoul, for the $10 donation. Um, Mizza T, you think they should give us a discount on Wii U ports that we bought when we were Wii U owners? I just got here. Yeah, I, I mentioned that uh, uh, earlier, Lurking Ghoul, by the way. That was my point. I was talking about the digital deluxe program, you know, that we got on Wii U. But I was also talking about the Ambassadors program that they gave us on 3DS. Um, they can easily, I'll say it again. Because it makes so much sense. They can easily, you know, if you're somebody who registered, not everybody who had a Wii U registered all their games. I did. They can easily look at your account. That was something that was supposed to be linked. It is linked. It's linked to your Switch right now. Um, if you kept the same account, uh, your My Nintendo, not Club Nintendo, My Nintendo, your My Nintendo, all that stuff is linked to your Switch right now. So they know what you bought. So all those Wii U games that you bought them and you and you registered them, you should be getting a discount for as a core Nintendo fan. That should be a, hey, thank you guys for supporting our worst selling console ever. You guys were there. You supported us heavily because we sold a lot of copies of games on that low install base. Here's something for you. Now there's way more Switch people Right? We all understand that. There's way more Switch fans and than there are core Nintendo fans on Switch right now. Right? We we get that. So you're still going to make your money. <laughs> you're, you're still going to make your money off of those guys. We're only 13 and a half million strong. You know? Those of us who bought a Wii U. There's 60 million Switches out there. You're still going to make your money on Pikmin 3. But throw us core fans a bone. Act like you care. You know? Oh, it's a business. Blah, 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 blah. Again, you're not... That argument is not for fans. That argument is not for gamers. That is a corporate ass-kissing argument. You're not a fan. You're not You're not advocating for yourself when you talk about, Oh, it's just business. It's just business. You're not a business. You get nothing from Nintendo selling what they sell. You get nothing out of it. But the Nintendo I know, they gave the core fans some stuff. They looked out for the core fans. Okay? So that's my argument. Your argument is just business. I know it's, you know, they got to make their money. They're going to make their money, your business. And uh, you can be a business and not, and not cheat your fans. Those businesses last longer. The short-term thinking, the short-minded businesses that we're going to make our money now, those businesses don't last. It's ones with long-term plans. They last. 
Here's an example. Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite, I thought, would be long gone, buried, and dead by now. But they had long-term plans. Smart plans. Plans that really cater to the fans of the game. And it's as strong as it's ever been right now. And my kids are bananas about it. And not just my kids at home, but my kids in school. Uh, they're, but they, they love it. So you can be a business that makes a lot of money and not be assholes. It, it, it's possible. Cause, because when you're not like that, the fans, the customers, your consumers, they really like you and they really support you when you support them. So any gamer or YouTuber out there advocating for business, it's business, they're not talking about you. They don't care. <laughs> they're not, they don't care about themselves as, as gamers. Some of these dudes ain't gamers anyway, so it's whatever. But they're not catering to you. They're not in your best interest. So don't listen to their nonsense. But uh, thanks for that looking cool. <clears throat> Rule 2 was in here? Did I miss? Oh, there he is. Oh, sweet. We're back. <laughs> uh, he must have came in early. And deal with my freaking issues I had. The stream. Uh, what's up, by the way, Rob? Lenny Terminator Juice. Good point. The old Nintendo might have funded some of those games with extra profit. Or some of that cell phone money. They made good cell phone money. Um... Let's see, Right Chance says, Lurking Ghoul, maybe, but why not offer new experiences instead of porting games? I know you addressed that, Mr. T. Yeah, they can do both. They can port games and offer new experiences because, again, this took us six months to make. They were very happy about that. This took us six months to port. So you can port games a la this, you know, GameCube era stuff that fans would lose their minds over. Core fans would lose their minds and new Nintendo fans or Switch fans, these are new games to them too. They haven't played them. So, win-win. But you're pissing off your core fan base. You piss me off enough, I will not be there day one for your next console. I will sit back and wait. And that's a shame. Because I've been there day one for everything except NES. But I didn't buy it. But my uncle was there day one. So I felt like I was still in that NES family. But I was there day one for every Nintendo system, including handheld. And for me to even think about not being there day one for their, one of their systems, you know. Again, I'm, here's the thing about me. I'm not, um, I'm the old dudes. Like, you're like, but the, you run risk of just shunning the old core fans for these, these new Switch um I don't know if they're trustworthy. I don't know. I don't know if you can rely on them. Because if you somewhat botch the next system in some way, or it's not popping the same, they're not going to be around. They're not going to be loyal. They're not going to be there. They like it because it's popular. Oh, everybody likes that? Okay, I guess I'll get that too. I know a lot of dudes who love their power, and they're all about their this and that, and they got to switch. Because, hey, everybody got to switch. They're not loyal. They're not sitting there buying... 80 games for it, like I am. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know, man. Instinct Labs, the Wii U was a box. The Switch is a handheld. That's the difference. Uh, maybe he's talking to somebody else there. Lupachilo, they used to give discounts to Wii U owners for virtual console games they already bought on Wii. Yep. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I bought... <clears throat> Per, uh, glad you brought that up. I bought, you know, Wii games on my eShop and whatnot. And to rebuy them again, I had to pay. I had to pay, but it was a super discount, like a dollar fifty, to bring those games over. Or if you go out, like you know, the Switch only version or the Wii U only version, you got a discount because it had like Miiverse integration and stuff like that. Um. 
Right Chance says Lupicillo didn't know that. Skipped Wii for Xbox 360 and got back for Wii U. Yeah, so they've been doing this a long time. And I don't know these... I don't like to call people names. <laughs> but I'm really getting pushed to the point where I'm just going to unleash. Um, but I'm not asking for stuff they haven't done. If I was asking for stuff they haven't done, just outlandish things, then you can call me entitled. But they've done these things. Uh, let's see. It's undeniable that millions of people are basing their Nintendo console opinions off of coolness factor. <laughs> yes, Rob. You are correct. Lupicillo, our window into the future. Ms. T. <laughs> uh, and not the merits of the console and its library. Tomfoolery of the highest damn order. Yes, Rob. And you are really good. I'll, gi uh, I'll give it to you, man. You are really good at being level-minded and, you know, not going off on the deep end like some of us others. Uh, so that's commendable. I can't do it. I be wanting to act a damn fool when I see tomfoolery. So... The Xbox is this gen's Dreamcast. Oh, it's not. No, 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 EJ. The 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 Xbox sold somewhere between forty two and forty five million units. The Dreamcast wishes it sold a quarter of that, <laughs> but it hasn't. Well, actually, it did sell about a quarter. It wishes it sold half of that. And maybe Sega would still be making consoles. Probably not, but. Um, and and the, and the Xbox doesn't have Dreamcast games. Like, that's another thing. Uh, it's sold better than Dreamcast by four, more than four times, but it doesn't have, like, all those staple games. You know, it's it's not that type of system where it's going to have this... Oh, remember? You remember the Xbox One? No. Nobody's going to be having this, uh, this love of the Xbox One. Um... 10 years, 15, 20 years from now. Oh, man, remember the Xbox? Oh, the Xbox One's great. No, that's not going to happen with the Xbox One because most of this game you can get somewhere else. Um, and a lot of times it's always been that way. And, you know, it, there are not really that many exclusives that stand out that make, you know, the Xbox One that system, you know. And I have one. Um, but I bought one. I know why I bought one because... Um, they got rid of the stupid Connect thing, and it was you know three hundred dollars when I bought mine, um, which is what I paid for Switch. Uh, and I wanted you know to be able to play uh, third party, uh, bigger third party games that were coming, like The Witcher Three, um, uh, and even some of the you know some of the games they got like Sunset Overdrive, at the time and uh, Master Chief Collection. I wanted to get back into Halo because I hadn't played Halo in so long. So I was like, well, here's a good way to get back in, to get all the games up until this point. So, um, let's see. My main complaint was, where, oh, what happened? It jumped. It jumped. Why did it do that? Furukawa. Uh, what happened? It jumped and I'm lost now. Pokemon. Whoa. What happened? This is crazy. This is crazy. It couldn't have jumped that much. Am I just that? No way. Yep. Uh, lurking ghoul. Oh, yeah. I, it... it I just got a, a dump <laughs> of comments. Uh, I thought I was near the end there. Um, oh my goodness. Um, I'm backing up quite a bit here. How did that happen? Oh my goodness. Uh, point click. To, 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 to Pikmin. Hey, uh, to Space Channel 5. Uh, to, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Wow, did it jump. All right, so my... All right, Joycey Johnson. My main complaint was Nintendo sending out 
half-ass hardware. Joy-Cons were messed up from the jump. Yeah, that is so very un-Nintendo-like. Um, and, again, some of these Switch fans... Some people call it Switch bitches. <laughs> some of these Switch fans, you know, didn't care or tried to downplay, you know, early on tried to downplay... Um, the Joy-Con issue, it's clearly a big issue. But they tied it down. Well, mine are fine. Everything is fine. I don't barely use them, but mine are fine. I use my Pro Controller. Uh, but I use my Joy-Cons a lot. Um, and But I use all my controllers a lot. So they should still work. And a lot of them do. Most of my controllers still work. My N64, day one controller. Um, let's see if I can pull it out here without... Day one in 64 controller. Looks good too. Still works like a charm. Me and my son were playing Mario Golf last night. He got really good pretty quickly. He surprised me. And I was very happy that he was playing something other than Fortnite. We played an hour and a half of Mario Kart 64. Or Mario Mario Golf 64. Um, so yeah. I, that That's Nintendium, you know? That's what it's about. How strong Nintendo products are. The, the Switch is one of the weakest built systems. And it's very surprising. It's very un Nintendo like. Uh, my main complaint was that Nintendo was sending out. Or I read that already. Uh, Mario Kart. I'll leave that. Because you guys are talking to each other there. Super Pokefan 95. That's all bad stuff happening in the world right now. Stop complaining about this product. <laughs> Just consume. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Super Pokefan. Good stuff. Uh, EJ Johnson, Crazy Taxi would be cool for the Switch. Eh, I'm a cra I'm crazy taxied out. I would rather than bring something else, but it's a good game though. Joycey Johnson, right chance not yet. What are they like? Um, you guys are talking to each other. Space Channel Five would be cool for the Switch, isn't that? Oh, it's on PS4, the new Space Channel Five game. So that's a thing. Um, I think it's only VR. Uh, Mr. E sold my Switch. I feel good. I don't blame you, uh, Mr. E. I hope you got something good from it. And I hope you got a good price for it. Because with the shortages, they were going for pretty high there. Um, John Redcorn. Wii U is the best console of this generation. Believe it. Uh, I do the believe it in myself. I'm just saying I believe it. You're right, Mr. Redcorn. I feel the same. It's the most. It's the one that has the most personality. Um, PS4 is right there. P no. I don't know. Um, it depends on your tastes. Uh, but PS4 turned it around towards the end. So um, the last three years, it picked up. Uh, awesomeness Shank Mods YouTube. Check it out. Uh, fangirl. What's up, Vicky? Hey, girl. Uh, let's see. It was... If this was player essence, he'll be celebrating mediocrity. <laughs> Says Skells eighty one. Hey, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to start nothing, Skells. Um, but you know how it is. You know, I, I do your thing. Like I don't care. Like everybody can do their thing, but don't talk down to me. That's when you step in out of lane. Stay in your lane. Celebrate mediocrity if you want to, and fine. But don't come crying about. Me complaining and trying to talk down to me. That's when we get issues. Okay? That's how I feel. I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying. Um, let's see. Um, if Nintendo stopped making games tomorrow, I'd be just fine and well stocked. i just play everything from NES to Wii U. Well, we're looking at 20, you know, 2020, uh, you know, uh, Whatever, like, <laughs> you know, uh, I believe we'll get Odyssey 2 next year because it's Mario's 35th, but I don't know. Oh, no. What am I saying? I believe we'll get Breath of the Wild 2 next year because it's Link's or it's uh, Zelda's 35th. And I thought we'd get Odyssey 2 this year. I, I mean, I guess it's still, it's still very possible. It's still possible that we can get Odyssey 2 this year. Um, but am I excited about... These dudes, again, they're excited about, um, oh, a collection. A collection of Mario 3D games. Like, I play those games on their current, or their, you know, the, the systems they were 
came out on. And they still look really good. They play really good. Um, I'm not in a hurry to run out and buy a collection. I don't think there's going to be a collection anyway. I don't think it is going to be, they're all going to be on one cart. <clears throat> I could be wrong, but Nintendo, as of late, hasn't shown that type of value. So I don't know. I already know 3D World Deluxe is going to show up, but hopefully it's the last port. Says Feral King. Um, Gamepad is way better. Just use a stylus and you're good. Says Lupicillo. I think he's talking to somebody else about a specific game. Um, Kahuna. Cl uh, Kahuna. Honestly, I felt rewarded when the Switch was announced. Now I feel like I'm being punished for buying a Wii U, which Nintendo shouldn't make Wii U owners feel. Exactly. I was super excited. 2017 pretty much the entire year going into the first half of 2018 i was very excited about switch i made a video about my switch obsession and blah 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 blah, blah, blah and all this stuff and uh, i'm down now that's why i'm having this therapy session that's why we're having this therapy session because i feel like you feel i feel like i'm being punished for supporting wii u Oh, well, if, if you bought the game already, you don't have to be feel punished and just don't buy the other game. Well, then there's nothing else coming. And I'm not going to buy it anyway, but there's nothing else coming. And this game is taken away from a, a sequel's shine or another game's shine. That could have been. That should have been. Uh, I don't know about could. I believe it could, but it should have been a thing. Uh, Instinct Labs, I've always found the Wii remotes to be frustrating to use. With the sensor bar, I prefer gyro on the Switch. Um, I don't. Gyro on the Switch, it's okay. It's just gyro, though. It's not point and click. It's not one-to-one, -one, you know. Obviously, the Wii wasn't one-to-one -one until uh, Motion Plus. But you could still, mo it was more spot-on than what the gyro gives you. The gyro is good for pointing you in a direction, but not the precision that the Wii remote gives you. Point, click, and toss Pikmin. Yes, EJ Johnson. Lupicillo, I think it's generally accepted statement. If you are a Wii U fan, Switch is not for you. Um, for the most part, it's not. You know, I bought a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that I bought. Um, most of the stuff, I think most of my games on Switch consist of, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, what are they called? Indie games. Indie games on, you know, uh, on, a, on a hard disk. Not hard disk. Uh, indie games physical, which is very appealing to me. Um, I like having physical copies of indie games. That is the best thing about the Switch for me. It's kind of sad. <laughs> But indie game, physical indie games, uh, I love basically, I don't want to say collecting because I play them, but I love being able to get physical indie games. And the Switch is good for that. But PS4 is actually really good at that too. Um, so, uh, I think it's generally, uh, read that already. Rule of two, yep, I'll say what I've been saying for years. Most Wii U ports on Switch are downgrades. Yes, Rob, you are correct. Um, I mean, you know you're correct, but yeah, they're downgrades Cause, because a Wii U game was made for the Wii U gamepad. <laughs> it was made with that in mind. You know, the, the games we're talking about specifically. Tropical Freeze is probably the only game. Uh, Tropical Freeze, and I guess you could probably say Bayonetta 2. You can make a case for Bayonetta 2 um, not being a downgrade. So, there's that. <laughs> but, for the most part, most of the Switch ports are going to be downgrades for me because there's no better way than using my gamepad to play this stuff. So, uh, Super Pokey Fan 95 Scott the Wise brought up that treasure tracker where the game's new DLC should have been used for a new game. Instead of being wasted on a port. Yeah. Um, we, we didn't know back then. That this was going to be a trend. But. 
that new DLC should have been a new game and had, should have more stuff added to it, obviously, not just that. Or just offered as DLC for everybody. Um, doesn't mean bad, but they're a step back versus Rob. Uh, it's ironic. The Wii U version is usually the definitive edition. Even Switch ports are called deluxe. <laughs> Says Lenny Wright. Jabo TV agreed. Exactly. Yep. Right chance, Lubichilo. He's talking to Lubichilo there. Lubichilo loyalty is something that has no price. Ask any mob boss. <laughs> here, here. Uh, get the likes up. Hit the like button if you haven't hit that like button already. Wow, there's 44 people still in here. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ouch, T taking a shot at other M. Says uh, Rob. That was a while ago, so I'm still, I'm definitely behind here. I'm trying to catch up. Uh, 2013, uh, Buck Snacks, says EJ Johnson. 2014, DKC, Tropical Freeze. Uh, what did I say, 2013? No, that was 2013. Because it came out, oh wait, it was 2014. It was supposed to come out in 2013. It was early 2014. See, even I can screw up. Slain Red should have been released. Should have released Pikmin Trilogy for sixty dollars. How about that? I heard that before, but yes, Slain Red. Thank you for reminding me of that. Why just give Pikmin one? Why not be play control Pikmin one, two, three with new added stuff? That would be. I wouldn't be sitting here going through the therapy session, pulling my hair out, losing my mind if you had done that. You know, I don't need, you know, those games again, but that would be a more extensive. Oh, Pikmin 1 and 2 in HD? Yeah! Now we're talking. That would be way, a way better extent. And those games could be <coughs> put on one cart. <coughs> you know, obviously this, the standard definition versions of them are less than a, are about a gig uh, of 1 and 2. HD versions would probably be 5 times that, so 5, 10... So you're looking at 10 gigs. Uh, what was uh, Pikmin 3? What was that? 4 gigs? I don't know. Somewhere around there. So you could put it on a cart. $60. I would feel way better about that. But no, you just want to offer the one game with a little bit of extra DLC and charge $60 for it and act like the other version didn't exist. Make it, make it not exist. Take, the, take it off the eShop. Shady, the same way you've been doing with these other uh, Selects games, these Nintendo Selects games, acting like they never existed. Um, yeah, that was a good one, Slain Red. Thank you for bringing that up. PS5 has my utmost indifference, <laughs> says Lubichilo. Same here. Uh, Jonathan Reed, Facebook Marketplace will help. Talking to Lurking Ghoul says, Wii U got me back into Nintendo IPs. I hear you on that. The, you, you can play so much of Nintendo's history on one console, <clears throat> being in the Wii U. You get all your Wii stuff, which means you got Super Nintendo. We mean, have, you have your eShop stuff, you know, if you bought it back then, and they don't exist anymore. But Wii eShop, Wii Shop, or whatever it was, um, you got all that stuff, Virtual Console, you could bring that over to you. You could bring that over to your Wii U. Um, beautiful. So you had all of that history on one console. You had all those different controllers, all those different ways to play. People act like, oh, that was confusing, and, it, and no, it wasn't. That was that should have been an incentive to play. You can play however you want. Here's all these different ways to play. Mario Kart 8 was the best-selling game on Wii U, nearly nine million. Thank you, Lubichillo, for that update. Nine million, almost. Harui, I bought the new play control. Uh, for picking one, I'm guessing. I'd be uh, Malik J, or Malik J C. Sorry. Uh, I'd be fine with Pikmin 3 if it wasn't sixty dollars and it didn't take down the Wii U version. Exactly. Factual. Right chance. Uh, Wii U gamepad was a game changer. Truly. Agreed. 
Lupachivo, almost every Wii U owner has Mario Kart 8. Yes! Uh, computer components. <laughs> RG RTX GeForce 2080 Ti. Retro Studios, Metro Prime 1, 2, 3, 2001. Uh, to 2007 versus Retro Studios, no Metroid Prime games, 2007 to 2020, and you know they got they got a couple of Donkey Kong games in there though. From 2007 to 2020, Retro Studios made two Donkey Kong 2D side scrollers, and they helped out with some other stuff, like Mario Kart 7, I believe, was one of the things. Welfare support, lol. Oh, this is really far back. Says right chance. And a kick to the nuts as well, says EJ. <laughs> You're talking about slapping the face of Nintendo fans, core fans. They most likely had to retool Pikmin 4 for the Switch then. But at this point, we might not see it till next gen. There's no Pikmin 4, man. It's not coming. When you, If you set Pikmin 3 up as a holiday title, basically, you know, put it in the Luigi's Mansion spot, basically, Luigi's Mansion 3 slot, there's no Pikmin 4 coming anytime soon. Um, as a rule, I don't buy PS unless there's Persona 6 or PS5. Uh, a Japanese company. Uh, it says Nizza. Um, didn't they say something about mastering HD when they when they were HD or am I mistaken? Yeah, I mentioned that earlier, Navon. They said it took them six months to make that game so you know but that was a water's era i'm just tired of the switch grave robbing the wii u I feel you man it's taking it's trying to take the identity away from the wii u i don't like that i don't like when anything does that you have no identity yourself it looked like you're gonna have your own identity but not at this point roger grunt also we all know how Nintendo operates. Don't expect too many new games during their transition to the next console. Nintendo usually is five to seven years. <clears throat> we are three in years in now. Yeah. Um, there was a time where Nintendo would front load with beautiful IP. Uh, they did that pretty much up until GameCube, right? Um, well, maybe some Wii. There was some front, there was some, you know, not some crazy Nintendo titles, but they were in there. Amauchi was a smart guy who predicted the PSP would flop. <laughs> Just Luffy Chilo. PSP didn't flop, man. Um, I'm going to say it. I feel Nintendo was scared in some regards. For example, I think they straight up scared or scrapped Pikmin 4 and added and added what they had to Pikmin 3 Deluxe because they're scared to risk it. That might be true, Feral King. I was talking something similar to that earlier. They may just not want to put money into Pikmin 4 because, again, Pikmin games aren't big sellers. Um, how is that when Nintendo focused on two consoles, they made more games, but now with one console, they are making less? Doesn't make any sense. I've been screaming that for a long time now, uh, Mystery. I don't understand it. I'm waiting for somebody to explain it to me. Maybe one of these shills <laughs> can give me a good explanation on why that's the case. But, you know, I don't know. Um, Yamauchi handpicked the water for a reason. Exactly. He was a businessman, but he was also, uh, how do I word it? He was also a man of the gamer. He was also uh, a gamer's gamer. Uh, Feral King, X doesn't need to be the Switch, rather X2, but I'm guessing I'm entitled then. <laughs> it makes sense uh, handheld is held in the same regard as the console development wise says Haru Harui um, let's see oh, um, 
Alexandra, I get your point. I don't have anything against ports, but Nintendo s should sell it at a lower price point and produce new games. Yes, that's all. I mean, again, I don't care if they're making ports. Um, you guys know that. I've been saying that forever. I don't care. But when the ports come in place of new games, then I have a problem with them. And especially if you price them as the, if they're new games. Pikmin 3 Wii U physical still expensive no actually pikmin 3 wii u is very cheap go get it now if you haven't bought it and you don't want to play what they're asking you to pay on switch right now physical it's still pretty decent 20 i've seen it from 20 to 25 bucks physical and that's both nintendo selects version and just a regular version 20 to 25 bucks right now I looked it up because I, I thought, man, it must be expensive now. Especially with them taking it off the eShop. The price is going to jump. I'm sure it probably still will. But right now, it's still pretty cheap. Um, thank you, T. I've been saying it's since 2017. Xbox is currently the most consumer-friendly platform. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> as a Nintendo fan, I don't like to have to say that. <laughs> but it's true. They are. Um, and you know, they're, they didn't choose to be, they got spanked into being that way because they were the most anti-consumer company and they got their asses handed to them. So they had to turn that stuff around. So if you sit here and make excuses for Nintendo and you still buy their stuff and you, you cater to their business cause you, you know, you, you like their business more than you like playing games apparently. Um, they're not going to get the memo. Um, outside of No More Heroes 3, I have no intentions of buying any Switch game this year. <clears throat> I've totally cut myself off. Oh, there's one game. But it's Limited Run. It's Limited Run... What was it? I can't remember the name of it. But that's it. I'm not buying Pikmin 3 again. Um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> um, T said they don't care about HD Rumble no more. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they don't care about HD Rumble. They act like HD Rumble is going to be this big new thing. They showed the glass. And like, I can see. HD Rumble still being cool. Like, you can still do some cool stuff with it. Just from my thinking on it. So, you would imagine Nintendo developers would have been able to come up with something cool. They don't care anymore. They just don't care. <clears throat> Nothing completes with the GameCube, says Lupachilo. It is a great console. Can't wait for that Wind Waker HD on Switch. <laughs> says I was, get out of here with that, man. <laughs> You know, that should have been a thing already, but you know, if it comes, it comes. I ain't buying it because the definitive version of Wind Waker HD or Wind Waker at period is this version, this the Wii U version. There's no better way to play. Like, I'm never going back to the GameCube version because the Wii U version is the definitive way to play it. <clears throat> Star Fox Assault 4 player was dope. Yes, it was. It was fun as hell. Imagine it online. Can Nintendo imagine online? <laughs> Their games online in a major way? Uh, give them ideas, please. I would love to. They don't. They clearly don't listen to me, Mr. E. <clears throat> I would love... They, they need that. They need a guy who is their ear to the street. You know? Every company, not just Nintendo, every every company needs an ear to the street guy to say, "Hey, this is what your core fans are thinking. Maybe you should think about doing this. You could do this, cater to your core fans, keep them shored up, keep them excited, because the core fans are also your commercials that you don't have to pay for." I'm a Nintendo commercial. I've been for years on YouTube. It's free money. It's free advertising for you. 
if I'm excited and happy about your product, I'm going to tell everybody about it, as I always have done. And that's free street publicity. You can't get anywhere else. You can't get that anywhere else. Yeah, you're swimming in the sales right now, but every console is not going to be that way. The Wii U sold more than it probably should have because of people like me convincing other people to buy one. I convinced four people <laughs> that I know to buy a Wii U had no idea it existed. <clears throat> T going in right now says lurking ghoul. I think that's probably an old. All oh, these are old comments. Um, I'm trying to get through them so because you guys, you know, put in your time to be here. So I'd like to acknowledge you as much as I can. I mean, there's a lot of chat going on, so I can't I can't hit everybody. I'm sure I hate it, and I hate it. I'm not like some of these cornball as YouTubers <laughs> that you guys probably watch, and that's fine. You know, they're out there, but I hate. When I'm live streaming, to miss a comment that somebody says that they're directing at me, especially. They're talking to other people, that's one thing. But if you guys are directing a thing to me, I try my best to read everything. You can't do it. Obviously, I'm a smaller channel. You know, I don't have a lot of people watching at once and commenting and all that stuff. So I can easily say, yeah, it's, I want to read everybody's stuff. But I make a concerted effort to read as many as I can and try not to miss anything. I hate missing. I hate going back because I go back and watch, you know, streams and get ideas. I actually get ideas for other videos or standalone videos for my streams. So I'll go back and listen to them. And I hate when I see a comment, especially if it's a really good, like, comment in the chat. I'm like, ah, I missed that live. I hate that. I hate it. I hate missing that. Um, right chance. So Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess coming to Switch. I mean, it should. Again, um, for the 35th anniversary, that should be a no-brainer. I mean, I showed you guys on GameCube what Nintendo did. They brought over all the NES. Obviously, they don't, they, they don't have to do that as much now because they have you know, Switch Online, which is amazing. So you can get <laughs> NES Zelda. You can get SNES Zelda. You can't get N64 yet. Um, you can't get Wii. You can't get GameCube Zelda on Switch right now. So that's the kind of stuff you would want them to do in a anniversary year. Um, I just, I mean, like, if this Mario stuff is really coming, why hide it? What's the point? It's anniversary games. It's, it's not like you're hiding Odyssey 2. I can understand you wanting to, you know, surprise people with Odyssey 2. Um, but Mario Galaxy and Sunshine, like, we should know about that at the beginning of the year. <laughs> if not last year. This is Mario's anniversary year. Like, why is these? why are these things still being hidden? If they are real. Like, that's another thing. We don't know that it, they're real. A lot of people, you know, suggesting this stuff that have suggested other games are real and they never come to fruition. So this might not be a thing. But, it, you know, it kind of should be a thing. Like I said, Nintendo has done this in the past where they re-offer, you know, their storied franchises in a collection. One of my favorite all-time Nintendo collections is Super Mario, um, Super Mario, um, what is it called? All-Stars. Super Mario All Stars is great because they, you know, they went back and they actually used the power of Super Nintendo to uh, to make those games better and look cooler. And I rarely go back to the original versions of those games, except for Super Mario Brothers One. I do, but Mario Two and Mario Three, I love playing the All Stars version way more. Now, uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn on Wii is still fun as heck. Yeah, I love. It's, it's better than, you know, than Star Allies, for sure. And Star Allies is more of a traditional Yoshi or um, a Kirby game. But Epic Yarn just way so, it's just so inventive and just gorgeous and, you know, cool that I had more fun playing that. I regret that I didn't 
purchase a Wii U, but I didn't purchase it because I'm Brazilian and Nintendo isn't officially here for ages and scalpers were asking for... Yeah, I mean, I'm not talking to you, Alexander. Like, you know, I'm happy for you to be able to play games that you couldn't get on Wii U for, you know, whatever reasons. You were younger and you couldn't afford it or you're Brazilian and they didn't have a Wii U um, in your region um, at the time and you came out later and like you said scalpers and stuff yo I'm happy for you go out you know if that's the only way you can get Pikmin 3 please do please buy it like it is a, it is a great game and it should be played all these Wii U games should be played but I'm also advocating for you I don't think it's right that even though you haven't played these games before you should be charged $60 for them when they're seven you know six five years old like that's not fair to you either. Um, so, while I'm you know upset for myself, I'm also upset for people who I don't think should be paying these prices for, you know, re-releases. Uh, Star Allies is another dimension mode. is hard. Um, I gave up on it, so I don't know. I know they added some new stuff. <clears throat> I will say they kept adding new things to Star Allies. That was great. Uh, but I haven't played it in a long time. I beat it and I was pretty much whatever with it. Uh, Origami King is way better than, I'm guessing you're saying, Color Splash. Did you play Color Splash? Again, I don't. I haven't played enough of Origami King, but I'm, I already said I like it. I'm liking it better than Color Splash. <clears throat> so, Scales 81, Nintendo can sell. Oh, Alex Prime, by the way. That's who said that. Uh, Scales 81, Nintendo can sell 200,000 units, but to be honest, P PS4 still has the best games and better comp. I mean, that's subjective. Um, it depends on your tastes. If you have more of a taste for third-person action, you know, photorealistic games, then yeah, PS4 is going to be your system. And it also has uh, every third-party game out there, multi-plat. Um, but if you... You know, tend to like more gameplay driven games that maybe not be as pretty, you know, then uh, you're more of a Nintendo fan than you wouldn't feel that way. So it's subjective. Uh, I bought three Switches in my household, so I'm not hating. Yeah, I, I don't think you're hating. I'm just, I'm saying you're just, that's your opinion. Nothing wrong with that. I have three switches in my household, and I'm hating. <laughs> well, me, my two kids have switches, and I'm upset. Uh, switch is not, you know, the best Nintendo console as I was hoping it was going to be at this point. Can it change? Sure. I hope it does. Give Paper Mario the most improved trophy, <laughs> says Lenny Wright. Uh, anyone still have their Wii U? The Nintendo Selects version of Pikmin 3 is still on Amazon. Uh, yeah, I, I said that. Yeah, Pikmin 3. Like, I've, I've seen it going from 20 to 25 bucks. Um, I, I didn't check Amazon, actually. So, yeah. I enjoyed Color Splash. So, you, you know, you're going to miss out on some of the new content. But I think... If you have a Wii Remote and Nunchuck and a Wii U, you're going to like the control way better on the Wii U version. I can't go back. Like I, after Wii Play, after, uh, what is it, Play Control, what was it called? After that, I can't go back to, like, uh, the GameCube way to play. Sega was very ahead in Brazil. Licensing, though, Tech Toy? Says Lupichilo. Um, Amazon is digital though. Okay. So you can still get it digitally. How? I guess if you have a code, you can still download it even though it's not on the eShop. I wonder if that works. If you have a code for the game, will it still... Because it, it will let you re-download uh, if you downloaded the game and you deleted it or something. So it's still there in some capacity. So maybe that will work. Handhelds seem to do better than consoles uh, most of the time. Uh, the PS5, I don't know. Uh, the PS5 apparently sold more than the DS, but 
I don't know about that. Uh, LOL, I am checking Pikmin 3, and Nintendo didn't even bother to change the box art <laughs> for Pikmin 3 Deluxe. <laughs> nope. It's the same box art. It's the same thing with Deluxe in it. And one of these, one of the excuses I heard, oh my God, one of the excuses that I heard, um, I'm not going to say who it is. I like the guy. He says some off the wall stuff. Well, you know, T, not everybody is a baller that can buy everything like you. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> like, if you're a core Nintendo fan, and the person who said this to me, I know has Pikmin 3 sitting in their house right now. So why even come at me with this stuff? But your excuse is that, oh, I buy it. I can buy everything. If you're a core Nintendo fan, you have a Wii U. Um, if you're a core Nintendo fan and you had the means, you have a Wii U. Like I said, there's issues you could have had. Like my boy uh, Alexander. And like I said earlier, maybe you were too young. and you, you, you have no purchase choices, you know. So you just missed out on it because of that. Um, or maybe you would believe in the hype. Uh, the hate for uh, Wii U at the time. I don't know. But... Uh, me being able to buy games <laughs> is not an excuse to why re-releases should be happening. Uh, Mr. Re, maybe you could get BB and he could clown <laughs> to the Switch like he did the Wii U. I think... He's probably moved on. I haven't checked him out in a long time. Bond. Um, but then people would just say, oh, you're teaming up with him just to hate on Nintendo? Like, that. I want to be able to say these things and still have credibility. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some people are trying to take away my credibility because they don't like what I'm saying. I can roll with that. But if I pick somebody that's polarizing <laughs> like that, and, oh, see, he's what we tr what we said he is. We, he's proof, you know. Um, I would still, I like to believe that I'm very credible when it comes to these things. Um, even though some people would want to discredit me and want to uh, downplay what I'm saying. So... <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Platonic Brazil used to manufacture NES systems. Then Gradiente made SNES and 64, and then they closed up in 2003. Says Lupichilo. Super Pokey Fan 95. It was a while ago when you read it <clears throat> and I posted it, but my DLC comment was for Breath of the Wild. Uh, Wii U having the DLC. It does. Okay, yeah, okay. Gotcha now. Thank you. I remember uh, that comment now. All right, because I, I was wondering if it had the DLC, and it does have all the DLC, so that's that's cool. So if it has it, I mean, I know it's a later game. Why couldn't the other games have it? Um, huh? I never saw any sale. Used to buy Nintendo World magazine from you. I guess you're talking to. The people there. What if Nintendo re released releases a Smash Brothers Ultimate Deluxe on the next Switch, and the DLC characters require a download? <laughs> That's when you'll know classic Nintendo is dead. Oh my gosh, Lenny Wright! Don't put that in the ether. Don't put that in the ether. That's not what we want out there. We don't want that to happen. Um, okay, you guys are talking to each other. Why are you hating on Wii U right now? <laughs> Says Lurking Ghoul. Lol. Uh, Miiverse was the shit. It was. I miss Miiverse, man. Miss it, miss it, miss it. It, it. So we're talking about personality and you know identity and systems having identity. Miiverse was such a beautiful identity to the Switch, uh, or the Wii U, the Switch. I wish. Um, and when you come into 3DS, you have Spot Pass, and uh, that was great. Um, what was the other one? Um, Trying to see if I can find it here. Oh, Miiverse on. I just clicked the Miiverse thing on Wii or on 3DS. Um, 
What was the other pass? It was spot pass and something pass. Street pass. Street pass is dope. Why did they get rid of street pass? Like, that was cool. You could take your, close it, sleep your 3ES, walk it around digitally uh, without your knowledge, link up with other players in your area. That was so cool to could go home and then be like, oh, I passed somebody else with a 3DS. Oh, they're coming into my little 3DS 3 uh, digital village here and they're saying hi. And that was cool. I like going to like gaming conventions and doing that. <clears throat> That's when you got a lot of hits. Like I like going to PAX East and stuff. Um, that was just cool, man. My Switch is mostly an indie playing machine. PS4 is my main game console, says Scales81. I totally understand that. Um, like I said, it's mostly a indie playing machine for me, <clears throat> for the most part. DLC for Wii U games for Switch. I would love gamepad support for Breath of the Wild. I would love love characters from Ultimate, etc. Yeah, I mean, I was for the long before we knew uh, about Breath of the Wild uh, losing the gamepad support. That was my stance. I'm getting the Wii U version. Because I want those gamepad features. <clears throat> and somebody told Al Numa that. <laughs> and somebody told Nintendo that a lot of fans might not buy a Switch or, or look at Breath of the Wild as a as a system seller if you have, you know, the better controlling version on Wii U. And so they took them out. And that was just a bummer and BS. Can we get some love for Fire Emblem Three Houses? Says Pharaoh King. Yes, we can. Uh, right chance. <clears throat> oh, we're having a conversation there. I'm sure Tokyo Nintendo is to alleviate droughts. I haven't seen that. It's Haru, Harui. The Switch replaced my PS Vita, but not my PS4. Yeah, I can see that. A lot of, I know a lot of PS Vita fans picked up a Switch because um, a lot of games that it would have got are coming to Switch, and a lot of games that it did get are coming to Switch. Uh, Rui Game Freak is now the Tokyo Nintendo building, or is now in the Tokyo Nintendo building. I didn't know that. Lupicillo, Thousand Year Door is still the best Paper Mario. Okay, I can't, uh, I can't disagree. Although I really love Super Paper Mario. But it's you know, obviously it's a very different game. Uh, Mecha Art. I remember playing Star Fox Adventures and Star Fox Command back on the GameCube. Command? Uh, Command? You mean Assault. Command is uh, DS. Um, Star Fox Adventures looks better than a lot of PS4 games. What? <laughs> Super Pokey Fan 95. The Switch Basement. Oh, that's from a while ago uh yeah the switch basement that is the area on your switch after you reach a certain amount of games that you load it up on there it goes into that little and more or whatever it's called let me look at it uh, let's look at that all right so let me scroll over oh it's all software so you go to the all software and uh, that's your basement. That's the basement. <laughs> that's the Switch basement where all your games go to hide. And it's very unintuitive. Um, let's see. You guys are having a conversation there. Hang loose T. I'm going to play some custom robo before I hit the hay. Custom robo? Funny you should bring that game up there, Lupacillo. Custom Robo. Um, well, you're gone now, but I'm guessing you're gone now. Mario 3 so good, though. Um, that's a conversation you're having there. Uh, ports can lead to sequels, though. Yeah. And you can lead a horse to water. <laughs> What's the saying? But you can't force them to drink. So just because they can lead to sequels doesn't mean they will. Um, 
and they don't have to. We've had plenty, thousands and thousands of sequels without there being a port in the history of gaming. So, I don't even know if that's true. If ports can lead, to, if ports actually can lead to a sequel, I guess if it's a game that came out back in the day that didn't do well and somebody ported it and it got like some new love, then maybe that would force a sequel. But ports, you don't need ports for Nintendo IPs to get sequels. It's Nintendo's first party IPs. They don't need your welfare check. <laughs> they don't. They don't need. Your support like that. Your extra over-the-top support. You know? Buy the games if you like them. Don't buy a game just to support. I mean, I've done that before, um, but it's different. It's not like I'm buying this because I want the sequel. <clears throat> um, well, I, I've never really bought a game just to support. I bought a game day one to support. So I'll buy something that maybe I wouldn't have bought day one before to show support. Um, but I'm not expecting <laughs> you to, to give me anything based on that. You know, I'm not expecting a sequel because I bought a port. T, do you like comics, says JT Gamer. Yes, I do, JT Gamer. Actually, it's that's a nuanced thing because I used to like well, I don't not like comics anymore. I'm just not into collecting and, and buying them anymore. Um, uh, but I have about 200 comics in my collection. So, yes. Name on Wise TV, Greatness Awaits, and we're still waiting. <laughs> oh, no, don't give us the Greatness Awaits mantra on Switch. My goodness, we don't need that. Um... <clears throat> Let's see. Um, where am I? It's crazy that Switch is the only Nintendo generation that fans prefer remasters over brand new games. It's literally, it's really sad. Yes, Matt Jazz 47, it is strange. It's strange. It's not just sad. It's odd. Because I can't remember. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go back. Uh, even when we got ports or remasters on Super Nintendo of Mario games, I wasn't asking for them. <laughs> like, I wasn't like, oh, this is great. I wasn't like it was terrible. Um, but it wasn't... And that game was was not a full price game when it came out. Mario All-Stars. Um, and... When I got to N64, I wasn't like, man, I'd like a lot of those Super Nintendo games to come over. No. I was on to the new, um, let's, do, let's do this 3D thing. Let's see where this takes us. And when I got to GameCube after N64, I wasn't like, man, I would really love uh, to play my N64 games on my GameCube. Um, would I have minded? No, of course not. I like backwards compatibility. But I'm talking about like re reselling. Um, and they didn't. I got Ocarina of Time, uh, Majora's Mask, and uh, Zelda 1 and 2, and um, uh, what is it called? Uh, what is it called? Uh, Master Quest on my GameCube for free. They gave them to me for free. Where are they? Let's see if I can spot them from here. Hold on a second. Because this is a, a sticking point that it's important to me. So On GameCube, not only did I get two original games, you know, got Wind Waker, which is excellent. Everybody loves Wind Waker. Uh, and uh, Twilight Princess, you know, 2006. But Nintendo said, hey, fan, since you pre-ordered this and since you're a, uh, a subscriber to Nintendo Power... Here is 
Ocarina of Time and Master Quest for free. Oh, and uh, here is uh, Legend of Zelda and uh, Zelda or Zelda Two: Adventure of Link. And uh, I wish Link to the Past was on here, but it's not. And uh, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, all on one disc for free. So they gave me these games from N64. These just they still valued these games. It wasn't like they had no value in them. They just, here, here, take this. They still saw value in them. But they also saw value in me as a fan. This made me super happy to have these for free. I mean, it wasn't free free. Obviously, I was paying for Nintendo Power or I was pre-ordering uh, uh, Wind Waker. So they gave me this stuff. And I thought that was great. And now look what they're doing. <laughs> now look what they're doing. And this was a system behind the GameCube. Just like the Wii U is a system behind the Switch. So, hey. And the GameCube didn't sell well either. Like, GameCube is a great system, but it was third place. It sold 21 million units, which was not that great. In that time. It's not great today either. But it wasn't great back then. But they didn't say, you know, we lost all this money, blah, blah, blah. Genki was a profitable system, same way the Wii U was. They didn't turn around and try to resell me GameCube games on Wii. You know, well, one reason it was backwards compatible. So they felt bad about that. But we, we live in a digital world now. Everything's backwards compatible if you want it to be. Just put those games on the eShop. Let people download them and play them. <clears throat> and buy them if they want. At a reasonable price. Don't make them into big things. And that's what's happening a lot on Switch. And that's what's disheartening to a long-time core Nintendo fan like myself. And a lot of Nintendo fans. <clears throat> um... Defendos acting like they own stocks. <laughs> uh, says Navon Wise and Pretendo. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. That's hilarious. Acting like you own stocks. It's a business. It's a business decision. First of all, saying that to somebody is like, you think they're stupid? You, you have to tell them it's business. Like, to tell somebody that. Like, oh, oh, I'm so stupid. I didn't realize that they're doing this to make money. <laughs> Dumb me. I just thought they were trying to be mean. <laughs> um, so, like I said, it's, it's talking down to people like they don't know. Like, you know something we don't know. And then it's just outright making excuses. Uh... Dang it, it jumped again. Let's see. Video Game Lover says, hello, what's up? Axiom Verge 2? What am I missing? What am I missing? Um, um, see, it jumped again. I hate when it does that. Well, I'm going to get Jamerican Gamer because I spotted his donation, $5. Thank you, Jamerican. Happy to see YouTube allowed you to use your channel, man. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Thanks again, man. Uh, limited Run Games is keeping Switch alive. Yes, Scales81. Limited Run Games is a big reason that I'm not completely just moved on. At this point, like, that can change. Nintendo could drop a game here and there that I actually care about um, or that I'm really interested in, you know. And then I'll be, you know, back in for a little bit, at least. Uh, but Limited Run Games is definitely carrying the torch for my switch right now um let's see all right here i am i'm back now for my jump alexander furukawa have back or bank background that talks much yeah i mean i i knew that from the beginning i was like oh no <laughs> he's a he's a numbers guy i said that before uh, he's a business guy he doesn't care 
It's it's all numbers to him. He you know he wants to get those quarterly and and, and um, statements to look really nice. That's all he cares about. Um, and that is good for a while. But there's so much turnaround with guys like that because they just don't last long. They they have the they don't have the principles to deal with art. It's like. What's it called? Um, the Snyder Cut, right? Batman, or not Batman v Superman? Um, Justice League Snyder Cut. It's like Furukawa is the reason that for a guy like Furukawa is a reason the Justice League uh, Snyder Cut has to be a thing because he's a stiff shirt guy. He's a business dude who looks at numbers. And he squeezes the margins, and he wants to get the best out of those margins, and that's short-term thinking. Um, he doesn't understand the art side of it, the consumer uh, value side of it. He's a he's a venture capitalist, <laughs> you know. Like <clears throat> um, their venture capitalists. Are short-term, nice, you know, uh, business booms or nice money booms for the short term. But in the long long term, the business is gone. That business is, you know, sucked dry. Um. So that is my worry. I don't know if he's affecting game development. <clears throat> if he's saying things like, "No, no Pikmin four. Let's make Pikmin 3. And add some DLC to it. Because that's cheaper. If that's the kind of thing that's happening. Good God. Be worried. Because you're going to be screaming. You're going to be hashtagging. Release the Nintendo cut. <laughs> uh, on Twitter. Soon. If this keeps up. If you bought a Switch day one. And registered it. You didn't get the Nintendo rewards points. Because they waited over a year to start the program. Your points expired while you waited. I, really? I I got all my rewards points. So I'm not sure what happened to you there, Lenny. NGL, if they poured over WW, uh, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess, I would be pissed off. It's probably going to happen, Farrell. It's probably going to happen. Um... Again, I wouldn't mind if it wasn't a big thing. Like, I know Wind Waker, or Wind Waker, I know uh, Scott, uh, oh my gosh, what is it called? I know Breath of the Wild 2 is coming. Like, we already know that. So I don't care at this point about them porting older, uh, older Zelda games. I actually, you know, would be pretty cool with that. Like I said, I got that on other systems, <laughs> you know. I got it for free, but I got them. I got that on other systems. So I wouldn't have a problem with it, because um, I know Breath of the Wild 2 was coming. But if I didn't know Breath of the Wild 2 was coming, and all they were talking about was these damn ports, I think I'd be justified to be upset about that. I bought my first Xbox One in December. Been through all the Halos, if you want to play, T, says Lurking Ghoul. I haven't played it in so long. I mean, I, <clears throat> I rinsed through <laughs> uh, Master Chief. And I haven't been on it probably since 2016, late. Um, I'm a little bit haloed out right now. I'm actually... Um, I have five to play. I want to play Halo 5 all the way through. I have to finish it. Um, but... Let's see. Uh, J... Jabo? Uh, Wii U is great. Just f fell short with the games. Yep. Um, they would have advertised it, but I'm missing something there. I don't believe the collection BS one bit. It says Pharaoh King. Me neither. I don't really believe it. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it would be a single standalone games, but a collection, I don't know. Uh, yep, I'm back playing my PS4 again. This is Jabo TV. Uh, Coloco. Uh, same thing with me and the Wii U. The Wii lost me as a Nintendo fan, but Wii U brought me back. That's weird because a lot of people say that, but 
the Wii brought me back. Like, I was going to be done after GameCube, and the Wii is what convinced me to keep going on. I wouldn't be playing Nintendo right now, probably, if it wasn't for Wii. Um, let's see. Wii U is probably going to be the new Dreamcast on the collectible ta- scene. Yeah, like, if you're a collector and you care about that stuff, buy Wii U now. Buy it right now. Um, regardless of Wii U games coming to um, Switch, because like I said, the best way to play those games, most of them, are on the Wii U. And uh, the Wii U will have its identity because of that gamepad. This will never, it will, you can't take it away. You can't take away the gamepad. Alright. Oh, what's this? Why? Oh, okay. Let me check something real quick. Um, yeah. So, let's see. Honestly, I honestly hope the next Switch has some kind of gamepad to TV gimmick. Similar to Wii U. I doubt it will happen, Lenny. Um, Sakurai is from that Iwata era. He ain't going to port Ultimate over to the next platform uh, like that lame-o. Um, New York Yanks. I've always bought Nintendo consoles as a secondary system to my PlayStation or Xbox. Although this gen PS4 pretty much ruled them all from 2016 to now. I can see that. Um, I've always... Oh, I read that just now. (laughs) I just want to go on the record saying Mario Kart comes out every three years. 2017 was the first time for a new one. What's the time for a new one? Says Kahuna. Yep. I said that this is the first system that will probably not have its own Mario Kart since it's been a thing. Since Mario Kart's been a thing. Nintendo has been smoking too much OG Gerudo Kush lately. (laughs) Hope PS5 gives a nice backhand and pushes them into action, says Mr. E. I I do too. They need to be under pressure again. Uh, Nintendo, I read that already. uh, Kahuna, also Nintendo could have made games like Splatoon 2. Smash Ultimate made a sequel using already... Yeah, ready use assets. Yeah. Yeah, these games that we're talking about have assets that they could reuse. They're doing it for uh, Breath of the Wild, too. So, yeah. Um, I was hoping at some point you could use a second Switch as a gamepad like Wii U. Yeah. <laughs> um,. Nintendo does again, that's a core Nintendo fan thing. We care about this stuff, but I don't think Nintendo cares about us anymore um, at this point. And uh, hopefully, you know, PS5 uh, Series X puts heat on them, you know, put some heat on that behind to where they got to get their stuff together, where they can't just sit back and collect money doing nothing. I don't mind Nintendo collecting money. I love Nintendo collecting money. Wii, 3DS, or Wii and DS era, they were printing money. I loved it because I was getting great content on the DS and great content on the Wii. So, I ain't jelly for them making money. I just want them making it, bringing new experiences and doing, you know, something meritous. So, Yeah, I just, I don't get it, man. I don't understand uh, defenses. I don't understand, because like I said, any de- no defense out there is beneficial to the gamer. It's beneficial to the Nintendo fan. None, none of these defenses is, has a Nintendo fan's interest at, at heart. So I'm not interested <laughs> in your defense, because it doesn't, cater to me as a fan, as a gamer. If you got a defense that says, hey, you're going to be rewarded on this in the end, let me hear it. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm all for that. But if your defense is, 
well, they want to make money. They make money, they business. <laughs> that is completely, you know, null and void to me. That defense. As well as the, there's real world stuff going on. I ain't got time to care about no video game. I got, you know, people's out here in the streets. I'm out there too. Did you know that? I've been out there too. And um, to the point of where I'm in, well, my family, we're featured because we marched. Um, and we're featured in on, uh, online magazines. So, but yet I here I am still sitting here with all the other things I got going on. I got a lot of stuff going on in my background. I can still sit here and talk about my hobby and just focus on my hobby, you know. You can you can still do that. So, you know, that's what that's my thing. It's like a lot of these people who have all these excuses, especially the uh, there's, there's stuff going on in the world, people. Um, they're not doing half of what I do when I turn this camera off. So, <laughs> your opinion, your defense about that is completely bogus to me. Because I can chew gum and walk at the same time. I'm hoping you can. You know? I'm always dealing with real world pressing issues. But I can do this and that and function like a normal human being. I mean, I, I, some people can't, I guess. I, I can't take that away from anybody. But it's kind of like the basketball players. I think, was it the basketball players or in NFL? Some basketball players were apprehensive to coming back um, to, you know, to play sports. They felt like it was disrespectful to what was going on in the streets. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You have a huge platform to continue this debate. <laughs> like, you know, sitting at home or, you know, whatever, is way less effective than you being on a microphone answering questions and talking about this stuff on a regular basis. So that's the best thing you can do is continue to live and do your thing and play sports because people are going to be paying attention to you <laughs> when you're playing sports. Huh? I mean, I guess you have Instagram followers and all that, you know, Twitter followers and all that. And you put out a tweet, you know, whoop de do and people like it and share it. But if you're out there in the public venue and you're talking about these issues, you bring light to them anyway. So you can, you're able to still be a functioning human being <laughs> in the middle of what's going on and still do what you love to do. Still talk. You can still talk critically about basketball and still support BLM. You can do that. It's, it's not hard. So same thing with me. I can still deal with the real world issues that we all deal with, that we're all going through. And again, marching and protesting is not anything new. There have been protests on uh, social injustice and uh, social unrest and racial unrest for quite some time. There's a protest and there's small movements every year. It seems like there's every year. I'm, I'm Maybe I'm tuned in more than some people, but that excuse is just completely garbage to me. It's just an excuse. To cover up for a corporation. <laughs> and that's all it is. And I don't understand what are you getting out of it. If you're getting something out of it. If you're getting paid. God bless you. Please do it. If you're getting paid. They're sending you a check. I mean go ahead. Oh my God. Is this all new? Oh this is. Scrolled up right. Please tell me. I scrolled up. Okay. I didn't miss anything. There's a couple more at the bottom. All right. Yeah, that's one thing. I can't hit on you. I ain't hitting your hustle. I ain't knocking your hustle. Please give me an excuse if they paying you. But if they're not, and they're not really giving you any games, what are you getting out of it? What are you getting out of the cover-up? <laughs> you know, if you're not implicated yourself, 
if you're not working for the company, then why are you covering up for them? Uh, covering, I don't get it. Help me understand. I love Nintendo, man. I love the Nintendo I'm talking about. I don't love what's going on right now. It worries me. Um, this could be a blip. I'm hoping it's just a blip. You know? But again, looking at Nintendo and what they've done, with the resources they've had, and have they had to allocate, allocate, allocate things, allocate games and development time and whatnot and resources to handhelds, looking at what they've done and looking at where they are now, they are nowhere near what I'm used to them doing. Nowhere near it. And if you got a counter argument, let's hear it. Let's get on here. We'll schedule a day. You got a strong argument you're ready to put to the world for everybody to see. Not to the world because I have a tiny channel. But you know what I'm saying. Put out to the audience. Let's get it on. Like, let's do it. I have people that, you know, come to me and say, hey, let's, let's talk about this. Let's have a debate about it. And I haven't heard from them in quite some time. You know who you are. I'm not saying you're ducking me, but what's going on? Like, <laughs> uh, I see you on other podcasts. You have the time, although you keep telling me you don't have, you didn't have the time for me. This is kind of your idea. But what's going on then, bro? It's strange. Um, 2021 has to be good. I'm, I don't know if you can count Metroid Prime in there. I don't know if that's coming in 2021. But goodness gracious, Bayonetta 3 has to be, at the very least, 2021, right? Um, we got Shin Mikami Tensei 5, which is great. Um, we got uh, Breath of the Wild 2, I believe. I'm pretty sure Breath of the Wild 2 will be that year because it's 35th anniversary. From the, they can't miss 35th anniversary for Zelda to uh, not bring out Breath of the Wild 2. So that's good. Um, I, I'm hoping for Mario Odyssey to be a surprise. What did I say? <laughs> I'm hoping for Mario Odyssey 2 to be a surprise this year because Pikmin 3 ain't it, Chief. <laughs> that ain't it. So I'm hoping it's going to be a surprise, let's say a November game or something. Uh, hopefully that's what will happen. But, who knows? Uh, if not, and I'm hoping 2021 for that. Although I wouldn't want, I personally wouldn't want a new Mario game to muddy up the celebration for Zelda's 35th. But, you know, I can live with it, obviously. So, hopefully Mario Odyssey 2, if it's real, I thought I heard him developing it. Or talk about that. Hopefully that saves 2020 for me. I mean, it's, you know. Hopefully. I hope that's a thing. We'll see. Um, da, 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 da. This stream has expressed my thoughts on the Switch, says Scales81. Yeah, um, and you're, you're, you pretty much moved on, uh, right? Like, you don't even play Switch anymore at this point. Yo, Big T, what's up? Master Yoshi, what's up? I was hoping at some point you could use... Oh, I read that already. <clears throat> Where's Billy Hayes when you need him? I'm in, like... All right, so that was my thing. I got motivation. So, Nintendium, right? Um, I've lacked motivation to celebrate Nintendo because of... The Switch. The Switch is bringing down <laughs> my mood at right now. Um, but I have to separate that. And I will separate that. Nintendium will have a video. What's today? Thursday? Oh my god, it's Friday. Um, maybe I'll just save it for Monday. So Nintendium will have a video by Monday for sure. I want to do two next week. Um, I want to do... A re-up, not a re-up, but um, a remaster, a, a extended cut of the Star Fox video. 
Um, cause my Star Fox video ended before Star, so Star Fox Zero, before we even knew what it was going to be called. Um, so I want to re-up on that and what I want for the future. So that'll be an add-on, um, <clears throat> to that video. It's one of my favorite videos. Um, so hopefully I'll have that for Nintendium. My plan is to have that up for Nintendium as well. It shouldn't be too hard. Uh, it won't take too long. It's like Pikmin 3 DLC. <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm going to drop that DLC, basically. And it's a new video, because a lot of people, a lot of you guys didn't watch that video, right? So that, I'm going to use Nintendo Switch logic, Wii U logic. <clears throat> a lot of you guys didn't see my, um, my, uh, my Star Fox video, my Star Fox retrospective video. Uh, and it's a few years old now. So I'm just going to re release that. And put some add-on content <laughs> at the end. I can get it out quicker, you know. So you cool with that, right? That's what I'm gonna do. <clears throat> so, um, and the first video will be kind of a hello, what this channel is about, and some Nintendo history. So that will be the first video um, for Nintendium. But I really want to do that channel because, um, like I said, this channel is stuck in the mud. I don't know what's up with my subscribers. There's something wrong with the coding on my channel, or some something is wrong in the code <laughs> on this channel. Because um, I get every time I get a 10 subscriber drop and then a 10 subscriber jump, and it happens every month. You know, and that's not normal. That's not natural. That's not naturally happening. There's something wrong with my channel, and I haven't gotten a net gain of subscribers in two years so there's clearly something wrong uh so hope nintendo nintendium will be a fresh start um and i can see what's going on because i have you know my boy clocked it i'm happy, super happy for him reaching 500 subscribers go subscribe to clocked it by the way again you can find it in not in here you can find it on my uh about page my all the juices of crews on there. Subscribe to them. Um, something is clearly wrong because he's you know he he gets subscribers regularly. He puts a video up, he gets subscribers, and then it's a regular occurrence. For me, it's not happening anymore. I think you know when they dropped G plus um, for channels that were my like mine that were growing at the time, it just totally wrecked my subscriber. Everything was screwed up. Um, it's not just me. I've heard tons of other channels say the same thing. They're stuck in the mud. They can't move subscribers like they used to. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not talking about. I need to see 20 subscribers a day. I would like to see. You know, what, to me is natural because that's what I've been getting forever. Is two to five to seven to ten subscribers a week. You know, so something is clearly wrong. So. Oh man, now T's porting old content, says Lenny. <laughs> exactly. Nintendo can do it. <clears throat> Why not Nintendium? Uh, but yeah, Nintendium is going to be, like the first video, like I said, is going to be uh, the purpose of the channel, uh, some Nintendo history, and talk about Nintendium. What's Nintendium about? Um, so it's going to be, I'm going to try to stay away from opinion stuff. Like what I do here, and just keep this channel for that. Um, but I'm trying to work on two channels at once, or three channels. You know, this channel is right now easier, but I want to do standalone videos again. But I, 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 I don't feel like doing them here and wasting. You know, I think I'm gonna. I'm that's gonna be. You know, once in a while I'll drop a skit or whatever here, but. My other channels will be more for that. So you won't hear me talk about, oh, man, don't worry, it's coming. You will see it come before, you know, I get on here again talking about anything. There will be a Nintendo video up and another one on the ready. And then um, same thing for my movie channel, same thing. Um, but, you know, you guys, if you know me for a while, I'm kind of a perfectionist with the editing and all this stuff. So I like to, some people will just throw that stuff up and you'll see their bad takes <laughs> in the video because they, they didn't, 
spent enough time even watching the video before they uh, uploaded it <clears throat> after editing. So you'll see people do, you know, multiple takes <laughs> a couple of times because they didn't edit it out because they don't care enough. No, they just missed it. It's a mistake. It happens all the time. But I think sometimes it just, whatever, put it out and they, you know, goes up, whatever. But I'm out of here. Um, I hate to leave with this many subscri or subscribers, this many viewers because I don't get this many viewers as much anymore. 46 it says i have 46 people watching right now is that true yes it is i'm looking at the uh, actual youtube page and uh that's cool um i appreciate all you guys for coming here checking me out thank you for joining my therapy session uh, i hope you guys uh were able to vent and feel a little better uh that's what this is about and maybe we'll have more therapy sessions in the future uh Hopefully, they won't be brought on by bad Nintendo decisions. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be natural and we can talk about things. Um, but, you know, um, it is what it is. And that's what happens to me a lot. I'll see you guys still and popping and I'm like, maybe I should talk about this and let's keep it going. All these people are still watching. I don't know how to cut a stream. <laughs> and that's why I end up with like four and a half hours of a stream. I'm not going to do that tonight. I am getting tired. I don't know if you can see it in my eyes or not, but um, I, I, I had a long day. I did a lot of, a lot today around the house and whatnot, so uh, it's starting to catch up with me right now. <clears throat> but uh, thank you guys, Mr. E, uh, Super Pokey fans, some people I don't see regularly, uh, Lenny Wright, Jonathan Reed, um, who, whoa, who's that? Oh, I didn't even see my boy up in here. Robert gaming with me gonna be watching this tomorrow. You got like 50 watching dope congrats T sub to him if you haven't already people. Thanks uh Robert for that. Yeah, I mean, I'm very excited to see this many people in here at once. So um I don't I haven't gotten that since probably 2017. So very cool. Um Hopefully that's this will happen. <laughs> you know, I'll get more and more people in here on happier notes. But um, you know, but uh, thank you guys again, uh, Master Yoshi, Feral King, Mystery. E, I said already, Kahuna, Lenny Wright, uh, New York Yanks, J Bo TV, American Gamer again. Thanks for the uh, donation, my man, Mackenzie Peters. Um, where's my girl at? I can't remember her name right now. JT Gamer. Uh, I'm going to try to be in your streams more often, T, says Kahuna. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, I said I would be on Twitch today as well. Um, maybe that'll help as well, but I, I couldn't figure it out today. And I was already having issues, so I just said, screw it. But I'm going to get up tomorrow and uh, try to figure out the whole thing. A dual streaming thing. It's not that big. It's just I've never done it. So, uh, Lupacillo, my boy. Uh, Scales81, right chance. Harui. Uh, who else in here? Alexander. Hollering at me from Brazil. Um, I, had a, I had a friend from Brazil I went to film school with, Nico. Very talented dude. He was just lazy. <laughs> he just, oh man. He was so good, though. Lurking Ghoul. Uh, already said, uh, Visor Grunt. Thank you. Thank you all. Alex Prime. Uh, oh, I missed... Uh, see, I missed stuff. I hate that. Jump Duke Jump. What up, he said well, a million years ago. Sorry, I missed that, man. I hate missing stuff. I do. I try not to, but... Um... EJ, EJ uh, Johnson, yes, EJ Johnson, RTX, uh, Malik JC, Jake Sizzle, uh, thank you guys, and girls, Who, where my girl at, where my girl, I can't, for some reason, Joycey, Joycey, my girl Joycey, she, she came in here with funny stuff, you know, uh, you know I want to talk about my childhood, <laughs> uh, had me dying, Joycey, thank you. Fan girl, my girl Vicky, always good to see you. John Redcorn, uh, T Juice, 
All my juices loose, fam. Rob, rule of two. Thanks for dropping in, my man. Um, Lurking Ghoul, thanks for the donation and thank you for dropping in. Uh, I'm trying to say, Trizzy Nah. I think I got mostly everybody. If I missed you, I'm sorry. But uh, thank you all for joining. See you next time. I want to do a stream, like gaming. Um, I have a couple of games in mind that I want to play. So maybe sometime this weekend you'll see me on here with my Twitch going. And uh, <clears throat> we'll be streaming a game probably from GameCube. So let's, let's see what happens there. All right, guys. Thank you again. And uh, uh, I will see you for next time. Peace out.